All right. Let's play some Spider-Man 2099, shall we? Six cards. I get to blow one of them up. <laughs> that uh, that's actually pretty solid for us, huh? Okay, now that's funny right there. That's, that's funny. Okay, so we're gonna be guaranteed to draw our whole deck here. Again, because these are gonna go in, we're gonna get three of them back, and then we'll draw on four, five, six. get vibranium sure People in chat are saying Spider-Man 2099 can kill Vibranium. Let's see if, uh, let's see if that's the case, huh? Nope, I was lied to. I, for one, am shocked that Twitch chat lied to me. Imagine being Mike Chat. Your life is so depressing. You think the cubes inside of Infinite Matter and you emote after someone gives them to you for free to see if a uh, to see if there's a bug that the chat is talking about. I hope whatever is terrible in Mike's life improves. Hopefully, hopefully whatever hard times they're going through. Get a little bit, get a little bit better. Classic, Mike.
Jin. Pizza Gibbon. Thank you for the two, the five months. Appreciate that. Well, Craven. If I was playing Conquest, I'd snap here on the cloak drum. Oh, cloak dagger at this point. The arrow, whatever it is they're doing into the throne room this turn, because all of these are going to be huge when I Heimdall, so I should be able to compete in the throne room. And then we'll Heimdall left, so that way I have Heimdall, Arrow, Ghost Spider here, and then I have a massive throne room here. From all my things moving. That's pretty good. I guess, does this beat Big Hulk middle? They soaked on one, they soaked on two, they soaked on five. Their Hulk is 18. They go to 36, 37. I'm gonna be at seven. Or sorry, no, this is nine, 16, 25. 38. Yeah, I think we beat we beat Hulk being doubled middle, right? Excuse me. Okay. I think 19's enough to win the left. Kirby says. Weird build. And we'd have, we'd have beat, we'd have beat Hulk left um, if they had slammed it because it would have been 18, right? We would have lost to Wasp Hulk left. I think, I think if they had Hulk, they were playing middle and we would have beaten them still. Because we would have been minus 16 here, which would have been uh, 30, uh, 39, right? It would have only been 37. Time to start taking notes so we can get some 2099 highlights in. But on torch right now. It's a good location for 2099, is it?
Okay, so this is actually kind of funny. If they can't interact with the Nexus, Heimdall Middle should win me the game, right? I think I, I think I just vibe here for a second. Someone asks, is it better to play into the Dark Dimension or the Nexus here usually? Well, there isn't really a usually for a situation like this. And this is the skill testing and difficult part about Marvel Snap is you can't just have heuristics for I always do this or I never do this in situations like this. You have to be thinking about, oh, what am I doing in this specific instance and why is it good in this specific instance? I could arrow, but that could also get myself into trouble here. I was gonna pass it up to Spike the Heimdall. One and four to do that. Yeah, I assume we're dead here without Heimdall. An arrow left or leave. I think leave is definitely the play. That's good. That's good. That's good. Win it though. Oh wow, they full played there. Interesting. Today on Shit Gamers Say, booster packs that could potentially have a million dollar TCG card in them aren't gambling, they're grab bags, which are technically different. Fucking gamers chat, gamers with a capital G. surprise mechanics, yep. Grab bags is what we call gambling marketed toward children. It's true, you know. For people that aren't following, uh, Wizards of the Coast, the company that makes Magic the Gathering, created a one-of-one one serialized The One Ring in their Lord of the Rings set. 
that currently has bounties for it fetching into the millions on secondary markets. And gamers being gamers, obviously, will defend this as a reasonable thing. Well, so far, our, uh, our, our games have been going okay, but we haven't been drawing 2099 at all. Is that a unique card or a unique cosmetic? It's a unique cosmetic. There's only one of this specific cosmetic printed. It's like, well, I don't even think playing 2099 is optimal here, right? Okay, better off just playing Vulture. Yeah, yeah, there's a good chance this just ain't, ain't it for 2099. We'll probably kick along to the next one. I've not felt like we've had good opportunities to deploy him to the board while also doing other things that we're interested in doing. Can you explain your sentence as if that was a reasonable thing? Uh, Dreadnog, I need you to tell me what what I what you think I just said was a reasonable thing. I don't I don't think a single card I don't think a single card being worth millions of dollars in a product that is sold as a lottery ticket that people under 18 are allowed to buy is a reasonable thing. You can feel free to disagree with that. But, like, I've pretty staunchly always been of the opinion that booster packs are gambling and should be regulated as such, and Wizards of the Coast taking the dial and cranking it up to a 100, breaking it off the knob, only makes that more so. Reselling your Marvel Snap account, I am fairly certain, is against the terms of service, and you should not be doing that. Marvel Snap is not an investment, and I cringe very hard whenever people tell me they're investing money in a game like Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap is a money pit that you throw your money into to set it on fire in exchange for the entertainment that Marvel Snap provides.
I know it's tough under late stage capitalism to think this way sometimes, but you should not think about the things you do for entertainment as their monetary return. It's okay to spend money on things that bring you joy without it being an, an investment. Ghosted, thank you for hanging out for four years. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, the my card game is an investment is a really big holdover from the paper TCG mindset where people are trying to justify purchasing expensive cards that they can't really afford by saying that they're an investment as opposed to they're just a giant fucking spew. All right, we'll, we'll punch the vulture. Avengers, assemble. My number one thing I would always tell um, magic gamers that would annoy them is whenever people would refer to their purchasing a magic card as an investment, I'd be like, listen, it's not an investment until you've resold it and have cash in hand because that price is going to go up, down, and all around. So no, you haven't made money on your investment until you've flipped it. We're going to do this. Maybe put, maybe put wave left and do this here. So that way Iron Fist goes here and I still have two open spots. Trebusura, thank you for the four months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Why don't you punch Vulture Middle for a second? I didn't want to put my Bradium in my deck. Whoa, they all went right. That's good for us. probably a win right we shang down the dino we trigger the penalty on the lizard we're up by one here we're at 11 over here still I didn't sit down and couch spectrum I should have Should have moved the vulture. Good arrow left in Jeff Min. That loses a Doctor Doom, but you could argue it's probably not in their output range. deck is bad when you lose to a pull an opponent. That's really not true. In fact, I, I guess this example doesn't translate for a lot of people, but for my, the niche part of my audience will get it from my former Magic players. It actually wasn't that uncommon for there to be a number of like tier one legacy decks that like couldn't beat a standard deck. And it's like, well, that's it's another way to say 
that just because something isn't good against something that's off meta doesn't mean that it can't be good into things that people are playing on average at the at the top right also like a one match sample size in a match where we like just got done talking about how I clearly fucked up to lose the game in two different ways that could have won the game is like to call that out as a reason why the deck's potentially not good. Like, don't get me wrong, champ. Most of the decks we're going to try today are going to be really fucking bad. Most things you try are not good. That's just how card games work. But the idea that like it's not good because we lost a game that I messed up in two or three different ways is very nonsensical. Going on, 3 Oct, I appreciate the half a year. Uh, Galactus popularity has fallen off a cliff. I think the card's actually better than it gets credit for, but it's definitely not uh, not popular anymore. I'm actually just gonna leave here. Uh, their destroy deck is good into our Spider-Man 2099 and cloning vats is absurd for their deck, so it's gonna bounce and take another one. It's in the third of a year, by the way, Travis. Speaking of investments, this one's worked out pretty well. God bless. How often do players not play something on turn one? Often. So one big adjustment if you're coming from other card games to Marvel Snap is Marvel Snap is not a game like most other card games where you have to play on curve every single game, every single turn. Having, having the right cards in the right spaces is more important than using all of your energy every single turn. Thought I made an infinite conquest command. Was it infinity conquest? Nope. Make a conquest command. Infinity Conquest with viewer submitted decks. Yes, Wednesday through Friday, we're going to do viewer submissions for Conquest Chat. Radar, thank you for the five months. Appreciated the Prime this way again. And GOZ, I appreciate you sticking around for, for five. Listen, all of those 70 month resubs started, started somewhere. They were five monthers at one point. How many collection levels do you see players climbing at week on average under the new system? If you are, um, if you are doing all of your free to play stuff on average, you get enough credits to get 45, uh, collectors reserves per month, a little over 45. Is this a 2099 game? Like I'm not 2099ing into the Baxter building. I, I mean, I could, I'm not sliding him into that. I mean, I guess I could just play him there, I suppose, for six deaths. The newer players should be upgrading cards whenever I have boosters for them. Yes, you just shouldn't use the fast upgrades. Yeah, I don't have priority here, which sucks. What what kind of sucks is I would have had priority if I would have played the Widow's Bite into Atlantis. Maybe they maybe they wait a turn. 
to Artem. We'll see. To the person that I just gave a timeout for saying the new economic system doesn't seem great, rather than taking a look at one number and then developing an opinion on it, I would encourage you to go watch this video where I break down all of the details on it and explain them in full. Oh, are we supposed to Spider-Man to kill? Kill the Panther? Yeah, maybe. That being said, I think we're still fine, right? I'm at 20 here. This puts me to 22. Oh, I can't I can't play a second card because it's uh what's his name? Oh right, yeah, we're good. Escape. The number the number of takes I've seen from people that are saying just like the new system doesn't seem good, and then when I ask them to explain the math behind why they don't that doesn't seem good to them, they just like can't explain any math to me. Like, a, a good life lesson in general chat is instead of just, like, half looking at something or reading a title or, like, the intro paragraph to something and then deciding to get mad about it, take a second and learn to understand what you're, you're, you're looking at. Or maybe if you're not going to take the time to understand it, don't just get mad about it because you don't understand it. Just to clarify, we're not allowed to share opinions because that's what it looks like. I didn't say you're not allowed to share opinions. I said you're not allowed to post bullshit in my chat. So if your opinion is bullshit, chat, 2 plus 2 equals 5 under a base 10 system is not an opinion. It's just fucking wrong. And I get that we live in 2023 and people think masks cut off your supply of oxygen and the world is flat and they think vaccines are bad, but all of those people being fucking idiots doesn't change reality. And people refusing to call out shit like that as being just wrong is a big part of why so much is fucked up in the world in 2023. So no, you're not allowed to post things that are just bullshit and wrong in my chat and say, whoa, 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 that's just an opinion. Only Jeff's opinion is valid. That's also not what I said. I said there is a difference between an opinion and a truth and something that's correct objectively. And if you don't know the difference between those two things, you can fuck right on off you're not a good culture fit for this channel. I would recommend a Republican safe space where they will tolerate bullshit like yours. If my ignorance is as good as as good as your knowledge, like. This just in. Overall, saving gold is better than mission refreshes um mission mission refreshes have always been worse than buying bundles yeah uh, mission refreshes have always been worse than buying bundles as long as bundles have existed Thoughts on Spider-Man 2099 with Zabu. It's probably great. I posted a video on 2099 decks I wanted to try last night, and uh, Zabu was among the cards in there. Free-to-play gold is purely on the season pass. That's also not true. The number, the number one thing, the number one thing I've learned from this change to the new economic system is that, I think we're dead here. I want to show something. The, the number one thing is that I've, that I've seen from this new economic system is a lot of the people, especially the ones that are fucking mad about it, don't realize that a majority of the gold you get in a given week has always been from these weekly missions. Two, 200 gold every week comes from completing these 25 missions in here from the weekly challenge. And that's, that's been the case since Marvel Snap released. 
It was a little bit different inside of the closed beta, but like since the release, this has been the bulk of where where the gold where the gold has come from. And yes, the new system is reducing the amount of gold you get, but it's also giving you more of the things. It's also giving you more of the things that you were spending gold on to be optimal anyways. So like the new system gives you more cards and gives you more variants. And those are the two things you spend gold on. It's fine to be critical of the removal of agency that the new system provides because it does remove player agency. And it's fine to be critical of the fact that the new system with the week long runs are fear of missing out. Like those are those are legitimate concerns and complaints about things that will be coming in the new system. But again, to just articulate my position on misinformation and not tolerating it in my chat, when you post bullshit, like you get less cards under the new system, that's not, or just vague generalities like this new system is worse, like that's not helpful. And it actually takes away from legitimate, reasonable, constructive criticism for you to just post bullshit that's not true. Yeah, I, I think the positives for the new system far outweigh the negatives, but I'm also very willing to engage in a discussion and talk about the things that are potentially bad in the changes. And again, I just think the, the good outweighs the bad, but it's also good to acknowledge the bad if you understand what it is. And you buy infinite entry, you can for 500 gold. So I have, I have 12 infinite tickets saved up, but I would expect we'll burn through those on Wednesday through Friday. So I'll be buying some for gold if we have deck submissions. I mean, for what it's worth, Kiggle, it's not, it's again, it, my, I think that even kind of misrepresents. I, I think that honestly misrepresents my position too. My position has nothing to do with stating, my, my position has nothing to do with saying people shouldn't share their opinions. I don't know how much more crystal clear I can make this. My, my position is simply don't come into my space and say something that's just fucking wrong. And then when I say, hey, that's not true, they're like, whoa, that's just my opinion, man. Don't get offensive about it. It's like, no, it's not your, you're just, it's just like you said something that's verifiably incorrect. Ver verifiably incorrect. That's not your opinion. You said something that's verifiably incorrect. Zabu into wave is interesting. Thanks for the prime, Joe. Is killing wave even good? Would I rather kill Wave when I rather have an 8 power Vulture? Playing on Curve is a appeal here. It is just a 4 9. So, one of the things I've heard said, I don't think they're Galactus in their Zabu deck, but obviously I could be wrong. Um. Wakanda forever. Being there, sure. Um. One of the concerns I've said, well, one of the concerns I've heard is that, well, Jeff, what if they put a bunch of bad cards in these things? And it's like, well, we've all been complaining for the last two months 
that they've been keeping all of the good series four and five cards explicitly inside of that they're keeping good series four and five cards explicitly inside of series four and five right so like i think it's very clear from second dinner's actions that their goal here is to make it so the series four and five cards are full of good good cards right like i don't i don't think it's a stretch to say hey look at the actions that they've taken they're gonna put the good cards in here yeah turn five mr negative into uh forcibly taskmaster at mr negative's uh a rough beat Hey, mortal. Thanks for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. No, series three complete players get 50, 50 tokens inside of, inside of their things instead of a hundred now. So if you're, if you're series three complete, you get 800 tokens a month from the collection track under the new system. In addition, in addition to the spotlight caches. To again, talk about legitimate concerns with the system change. One thing that the jury is still kind of out on that we don't know the answer to yet is how big do they intend to have series four and five B for them to be content with the new system? And that again, might even be a number that they themselves don't have a good answer to yet. Like they, they might not know how many, they might not know how many, um, the stuff on discord seems to indicate the hundred token fallback has a change. It's from second dinner. Second dinner has told us that it's a 50 token fallback now. It's why on the series three complete infographics that they put out, it says 800 tokens per month instead of 400. There's a 400 increase and 400 divided by eight is 50. So one thing I'm feeling while playing this particular deck is it definitely feels like um, I don't have enough proactive things to play early. Is stature worth it as a pickup? I think the stature black bolt deck is quite good. Okay, I don't actually know if Spider 20... Can 2099 kill face down cards yet? Anybody know? He can't. What? That's just so inconsistent. Why Why can Stegron hit face down cards, but Spider-Man 2099 can't hit face down cards? Anybody, can anybody explain that to me? What? Yeah, I think I'm ready to try the zombie builds. This card does not feel... Feels too clunky at four energy. Maybe if we make it three, it'll be fine. Happy Cappy, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Appreciate that. Yeah, so just... Uh, let me let me pull up the graphic I'm talking about here. Uh, where is it?
So this is the series three complete. My camera's blocking the word complete. Series three complete. You get 800 tokens per month. Versus series three incomplete is getting 400 tokens per month. And these, these infographics are straight from second dinner. These are not something I put together. They provided this for the community. Dan, Thank you for the almost five years. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back. So again, the eight series three cards turn into a 400 token, 400 token increase, which is 50, 50 per card. If you have a link to a second dinner person saying verbatim in a public space that it's 100, I'd be happy to see that and follow up with my contact. But in, pri in private channels, I have had it confirmed that it's 50 tokens per card when your series three complete. I have not, I have not seen a public or private message that goes against that. If you, have, if you have a public message that runs counter to what I was told privately, feel free to provide a reference in chat. Uh, the new system is likely coming on the 11th. That's the earliest it could be here. If it doesn't come on the 11th, it'll be four weeks from the 11th. But I feel like if it wasn't coming on the 11th, they wouldn't have posted about it by now. It's confirmed that 2099 only kills face-up cards. That's so weird. For people asking about conquest stuff, all of your tickets and medals at the end of the season go away. Use them or lose them. Yes, based on what they said, I think it could be implied that uh, series drops are not coming in the next patch. They would have announced them already. Well, there's not random cards in the pools and there's not no agency. Under the new system, which cards are coming in a given pool is announced at the start of each month so you know when they're coming. And you also get to choose which systems you pull your cards in. So it's not it's not really accurate to say that there's no agency under the new system. You don't have the option to get any cards you want at any point. That's true but you do still get to choose when you spend your resources. Craven, pull Craven middle. Maybe I Jeff into Craven here and leave myself some flexibility on this. And then be able to pull Craven middle next turn if I want. Jeff left, Craven right. I can see that too. I don't know that I want, I don't know that I want to, I don't know that I want to play for here though. Let me do this. Gives me a little bit of a penalty here, but they might they might not be able to compete in the negative zone. I think I like this. Oh, they're a Professor X deck. Okay. It was not what I was expecting in their output range. Oh, I could have tied the right by moving Jeff there because of Craven. That's a good shout. I think 
they're gonna play for middle. I think we just stacked the middle, but yeah, I could have, I could have done the right. That's a good shout. Chavez, rip. Oh, we would have beaten him, champ. I missed, I missed the, the Craven buff. I missed the Craven buff. Won that breaker by a good margin and a bit of highlightable game. Am I still playing Star Rail? I am still playing Star Rail. I'm not intending to pull for any characters in the short term. I'm pretty happy with the team that I have. I pulled uh, the Hacker and uh, the Lightning Lion Dorko. So my, my Pokemon are all right. That's fine, right? We're gonna do this anyways. Hi, evolutionary. Gets us what? It was like a 12 power kind of. Wind my hand. One of the nice things about Stegron is. My opponent technically doesn't even get to know like what the result is. So it's hard for them to make a good decision here because they don't know like what this is actually going to do. So it removes some of the value from Daredevil because of the random element in play here. They can't really make an informed decision because Scotty doesn't know. And even if they like Professor X here. Well, I guess if that goes to the Professor X gets me. Okay. How big is their... They passed on one. They passed on three. They had extra energy on four. Their Hulk is 18. This is plus 10. So this is also 18. Did I lose the breaker here? That's plus eight? No, they had extra energy on one, on three, on four. It's 18. Oh, I'm also killing Iron Fist, yeah. Yeah, we're just dead to Hulk no matter how we cut it. Escaped. I'm gonna decline, decline playing the game where we get Sakar diffed and then 
the location that says I can't play any of my cards slips up. What's the best win rate deck for Conquest right now? When I looked yesterday, the two best win rate variations for Gold Conquest on Untapped were Bounce Variations. Which makes sense to me. I, th I think Bounce is the best deck in Marvel Snap right now. I think the reason why it's not more popular is because it's very difficult to play. You still have 1,700 Angela Boosters. Yeah, I actually got the... The gold split on her relatively fast. I think it only took me like two or three splits to gold. Gold background her when I when I finally got her in my shop. Sorry, I put it. I'm waiting for my desk to finish going up before I click end turn. Apologies. Uh, that's good for us on average, I think, so... I would snap here if we were playing Conquest. Honestly, I might just do this here. Just to... Not clutter up Grand Central. Well, they're a full destroy deck. Dust Domain is getting less good for us. Hey, sweet Brett. Thanks for the quarter of a year. Appreciate that. It's moving us up towards our sub goal for the month. As many of the regulars know, I don't run a ton of ads here on my Twitch channel uh, during the stream. A big part of the reason why I'm able to do that is because the bulk of my income is able to come from the very generous people that subscribe every single month. As long as we can maintain that 2,500-ish sub goal, that will continue to be the case here. I appreciate the folks that support directly with their own dollar dues or with Jeff Bezos' dollar dues. Ah, yes, the Phantom Iron Fist bug. <laughs> I would just do this and play for the 50-50, right? Wait, what? Oh, we lost the 50-50. They didn't have null, it was a bluff. And then we lost our coin flip, rip. Jeff, what changed in the metagame? Because I remember you saying previously that you thought Bounce could never be the best deck due to Wave and Sandman. It's an unexpected change. Well, so one thing that's worth noting is that Bounce is not super popular. And I think the Bounce deck would be worse if it was more popular. So we don't, I don't have metagame breakdown for Conquest, but to show the metagame breakdown for, um, for the latter, we can look at 70 to 99, where it's a little more competitive. You can see here, Evo Control and Lockjaw are significantly more popular than the Bounce deck. And again, I think this popularity difference is in large part due to the fact 
that um, is in large part due to the fact that this deck is difficult to play. I also think that this um, this deck is better into things like Wave and Sandman than I originally gave it credit for, especially in Conquest, where when you know you're playing against Wave and Sandman, you have the opportunity to play around it. I think I actually think Wave and Sandman are worse against a bounce deck inside of Conquest than they are inside of the ladder. Yeah, can we can we tighten the bands here? Yeah, so we go to 80. And it's still about 3.2%. Both the Evo decks get more popular. Then we look at the 90s. Look at the 90s and both the Evo decks get more popular again, but the bounce play rate stays consistent. Now I I do have Untapped gave me some... Oh, is it not working? It was working last night when I looked. I refresh. Hard refresh. Okay. So, this is gold sorted by win rate with at least 200 battles. So, by a small margin, the two most winning decks here inside of Conquest for uh, untapped gold conquest data are bounce variations here. Uh, it's also worth noting that like, again, high evolutionary is a lot more popular, right? Which is it reflective of. Also, just to highlight how less diverse this format is, conquest is more competitive, which means it's less diverse than the latter. So these are sorting gold conquest by most played. High Evo, high Evo, high Evo, high Evo, high Evo, Sarah Hitmonkey, Darkhawk, Bounce. And like that's that's really to highlight too, right? Like how, look at how many decks there are that are more popular than Bounce. Like it's real, it's really not more popular. In fact, to get to a non-hit monkey, non-darkhawk deck, we get to uh, we get to the destroy deck. The destroy deck's the first one that again has good. I think this oddest destroy deck is very reasonable. There were there were a bunch of doubters when I posted the highlight with this deck uh, last week or this week when I forget what it was. Talking about how I think it was good. All all of the metrics back up that this deck is very reasonable. Eight packs, thank you for the 33 months. Bando, coming in hot for the quarter of a year. And Sweet Brett, thank you for the quarter of a year as well. For people asking, you have a paid subscription to Untap, how do you get to this data? It's not fully public yet. So there's been some days where it's buggy or doesn't populate and they're working on filling it in. Um, I work with the Untap people to give them feedback on features like these and they gave me permission to share this on stream and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a good observ that's a good observation. That's a good observation too. This data comes from people who install the app. So that's actually just to highlight one other thing for anybody that hasn't looked at a data breakdown with us before. I'm gonna mute this for a second so I can hear myself think. Um something to understand about the metrics in here, especially when I sort by win rate, 70% is an absurd win rate, right? The thing to understand about all of the win rates and even the, the play percentages to a degree on untapped is that untapped, like all data sources, has bias in its data. And the bias in untapped data is self-selection bias, that sample bias who's responding and giving them information. And if I think about the population of who I expect to be giving untapped data... I would assume that untapped gets data from people who are more competitively minded and are working harder to try and do their best to win. So what that means in terms of that bias and how it translates to what we see in the data is I would assume that all of the win rates of every deck on untapped are skewed higher than the population average win rate for that deck list on second dinner's back end. Like I would bet this 70% 
is probably still high because the bounce deck is good, but it's probably much less than almost 70% if you had access to everyone's data that's playing. And I think in terms of like percentages, for example, when we look at the meta report, I would, I would bet that all of the popularity percentages that we see on this meta report are skewed high for the more popular decks. I would bet the population popularity for everyone that plays Snap is smaller than what untapped reports because I would expect the general population to be trying to win less than people that are sending data to Snap. So let's play some more Spider-Man 2099. For anybody that's new to the channel and you're not familiar with me and my background, uh, I have a graduate degree and an undergraduate degree in mathematics. Uh, I spent time teaching uh, math and stats and other topics at the high school and college level in a former life. Also spent time doing data analysis and process automation for a Fortune 50 company for a little while after grad school. So working, working with numbers is very much inside of my wheelhouse and I enjoy those types of dissections. Iron Man is inbounds. It's worth noting that I believe the Iron Man bounce decks were performing worse than the non-Iron Man bounce decks. If you sort by, uh, by the metrics. Regarding the econ overall, let's say you have a bunch of gold or our whale. Is using gold to buy credits and upgrading cards to unlock collection tiers a bunch of reserves available when it kicks in and you have an opportunity to get 40. So... People keep asking that question, Jeff, what's optimal to do to progress your account under the new system? And the answer to that question is always depended on whether or not, um, the answer to that question is always dependent on what else is going on in terms of bundles. So based on the current data mined bundles in Marvel Snap, I do not expect the Marvel Snap economy to meaningfully change for end game players like myself. If you look at the upcoming bundles, there are still a significant number of bundles that contain collector's tokens. And it has never been optimal to buy gold and turn that gold into credits and upgrade your collection level track to get cards. And I don't think the new system changes that. Yes, that grad mid's probably, probably best actually, right? Oh, this is worse into reality stone on bar. Holy shit, we're dead, LOL. GG. Some people commenting on the closed captions that were added to the stream. Yes, I added a plugin that adds optional closed captioning to Twitch's player for those that find that a convenient accessibility feature. If you have closed captions that popped up for you automatically and you would like to take them off, you can click on the settings for your Twitch player and disable them. Those are on, on the overlay there. They are not uh, on my actual screen. So you can, you can toggle those off if they are detracting from your experience instead of adding to it. I love the closed captioning. Now I can even watch during Zoom meetings. That's, it's a big upside. Just remember chat, if you're, if you're watching the stream on muted, do, and this goes for any stream. If you're watching a streamer that you like and you have the stream muted, you should mute your browser tab. Don't mute the stream player because if you mute the Twitch player, you no longer count as a viewer for that stream. So if you want to help me out and help out whoever it is that you're watching and help our viewer counts, make sure you right click on your Chrome or Firefox tab and mute the tab instead of muting the Twitch player. But if you mute the PC, yeah, if you mute system wide, that that also works. But yeah, that's a that's a that's a Twitch hack to uh, help uh, help some people out. Oh, our friends are not flipping up this turn, so I can't rescue next turn, Sedge. 
guess we'll just check them. Hey, Chief Guard Beef! Coming in hot for the fifth month. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Just doing this. We're vibing on Iron Fist for now. I'm just a bot, so I can't hear anyways. <laughs> We we're talking about my background when I mentioned that I used to be a teacher and stuff for people that are new. That was a long time ago for me at this point. I've been streaming on Twitch for a decade and uh, I gave up I gave up teaching when I started doing this full time about five years ago. What I teach? Uh, mathematics. Jeff was there when the deep magic was written. Yeah, exactly. Has it really been five years old? It has, Rock. It has. Not to, not to make too many people feel too old, but it's been a, it's been a minute. I have a favorite Mr. Negative deck. I really like the Deadpool Mr. Negative deck. I think it's fun and reasonably competitive. My worst nightmare is trying to teach math to uninterested kids. I did not give up teaching high school because of the kids. And I did not stop teaching college because I dislike teaching. Chat, to set an incredibly low bar, when Twitch.tv streaming started making me money, it makes significantly more than I made as an adjunct math professor. I just, and I just want to emphasize that it's a really low bar. One of one of the colleges I taught at paid me 1200 USD for an entire semester's class. It is not a lot of money. And I and two two things about that factoid. One, I got paid more as a math adjunct than people that taught social sciences and English stuff, language arts. And two, uh, no, my brain is melting on two. I've lost it. Death has to be coming. Yeah, I think we're pretty dead here. I think we're, I think we're probably pretty dead here. We'll stay in for the lulls because it's the infinite ladder, but probably dead. Gilded, thank you for the 39 months. And Wardav, thank you for the 48. Okay, locking Wolverine in, in right is quite reasonable for us, huh? Is it? Uh, does 11 win the middle? Chance 11 wins the middle, right? I have an Iron Fish trigger pending. Let's go. This could go either way. Yeah, got me. That's 1,200 per class per semester, though, right? That's why some teachers teach several. Yeah, so a semester was generally speaking somewhere between 10 and 15 weeks, depending on the school. So teaching five classes was considered a full-time load. So if you taught five classes at 1,200 bucks a pop, it was six grand for the semester for, you know, what, three months? So you made two grand a month, so it was like $24,000 a year.
No, I started late this morning, so we didn't get any Diablo in this morning. This edge. I missed my demon slaying on stream. And for what it's worth, it's been a little bit since I taught. So I assume it's not significantly more now, but that was six to ten years ago. So it's, pro it's probably a little bit higher. But I would wager it's not a lot higher based on, you know, capitalism and all that. I don't really need to play for the Gamma Lab because we have Shang-Chi. How many hours do you have to work for one class as well? Well, it depends on a lot of factors. So... If it was the first time you were teaching a class, it took you more time to do it than the second or third time you teach a class because the more you teach the same thing, the more, more used to it you are. Playing Zabu this turn feels so inefficient. It gives up two energy, but it's gonna make me back at least two energy on the last turn, and it gives me like cube equity, right? So I think we do it. Cube equity. Cube equity refers to how many cubes you can get out of your opponent at the end of a game. Having your things that generate big swings happen in the final moment increases your cube equity. Oh gosh, we're going to kill their Wolverine here. Early read on 299. Probably not good. <laughs> hey, YOLO. Chicago public school teachers average $68,000 a year, which is higher than most systems. Yep. Opponent cooking. We have some Shang Chi's. Why did I decide to put rescue there over the other option? She was the most points, right? Victory. These other cards are just three. Yeah, I think 29 I should probably be able to blow up blow up multiple things. Twenty ninety nine work with Moon Girl. I mean, yeah, if you play Moon Girl, um, I'm sure, sure. If you play Moon Girl and copy twenty ninety nine, you could have a second, a second card to blow something up, and then you also have to move them twice. It sounds like a lot of work to blow up one more thing.
Yeah, it's also a ton of energy. Agree. Seems like a much worse Shang-Chi. It's just very different than Shang-Chi. is a synergy card you have to build around a little bit. Is it worth it to hoard credits? Holding credits is really no different than holding reserves, so hold whatever makes you happy. To be fair, most of the spider people variants tend to be good. Is it a hot take to say this might be the worst spider person variant that exists in the game? I'm real, I'm real, I'm real low on this one, chat. Just not a, not a fan. Uh, we have been told that there will be more direct to series four cards coming. It has not been communicated which ones those will be. Do you really like Killmonger in this deck? I mean, I have no idea what I like or really like in this deck. We're playing some games to try and figure that out. It could definitely be possible that Killmonger is better as maybe like Polaris to synergize with Kraven and just be a card we can play on curve. I definitely really think one mistake I made with some of these decks that we put together is I don't have enough cards to play on curve cleanly. Okay, yep. I guess he only kills Invisible Woman, but that'll be enough to win Mojo World. And then we have a lot of stats here still, right? We're at 16 on the right. I mean, they obviously messed up, but like, we would have, uh, we would have got him regardless, huh? Victory. I think I like the idea of trying Polaris over Killmonger. I definitely feel like I need more cards to play on Curve here. I think it is really weird that 2099 only kills face up guards, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, Bootman. I'm playing rescue because you could buffer and then move the thing that she used to buffer to somewhere else. She might be better as a different four drop, but I was looking at the deck list and felt like I wanted something that offered a lot of stats. And she's probably the best thing we could play with Zabu that offers a pile of stats. Hey, Alaric, thank you for the seven months. Welcome back. Let's destroy Thanos. Craven into Iron Fist, and then we'll punt the Vulture into the Sanctum here next turn. I do also have a sick rescue variant, it's true. Strong, strong reason to consider playing it. I 
I did be a little concerned with Stegron potentially hitting something into Sanctum. That means I don't win. I don't win it with uh, oh, what's it called? Vulture. Also, just do this, right? It's kind of the same, right? We could Polaris, right? I don't know that I could win though if I grab the Carnage, right? Because if I pull the Carnage right, I'm at six, and then they're at thirteen. I think I think this is I think this is better. Oh, you know what I could also do? We vultured last turn. I don't think they're a Doctor Doom deck. I could do I could do this and pull my Vulture back into the middle for a ton of stats and then slide Jeff to the left. I think I like this actually. This actually ends up playing really well into this, right? And then actually here, I could go move Jeff, Shang-Chi this, Polaris your Carnage into the middle. They have priorities. They could play like other ones and twos out here. That feels unlikely. And there's also a chance that I just like win right and center, even if I don't grab the Carnage and win the left. Okay, we win left and right. Nobody, nobody tells Jeff where he can't go, Chip. <laughs> the closed captioning just substituted the word chat for shit. And I don't know. I think, honestly, uh, the closed captioning might be onto something. All right, I think we're gonna Iron Fist uh, in the kiln here on the right, and then we'll kick Spider-Man into the Monster Island to blow that up.
Why didn't I Zabu and then Iron Fist? Because if I Zabu'd, I couldn't play 2099 into Crimson Cosmos. I also think we're dead here. This location really sucks for our deck. It's locked out of two, two thirds of the board. Start here, I suppose. Hopefully they're setting up to Carnage, the Stark Tower here, and then will Polaris end their whole career. That's actually great, because now I get to go Angela plus Jeff next turn. I think 2099 is likely going to be a very safe pass for most people. Honestly, Jeff Rescue is something. Jeff Rescue and Kitty Rescue is something I should try in more decks. She's, she's really, really pretty solid with uh, these cards. Uh, Spider Pig's very good. I think Spider Pig is uh, a format staple. It's an accurate, accurate summary of it. All right, I would like to murder your Deathlock, please. for all three here. That way we uh, beat a copy of Null. No, uh, Spider-Man 2099 killed the one I wanted to kill, Chet. I wanted to, I wanted to kill that one because we have Shang-Chi to kill the other. That was, uh, we won that coin flip, technically. You could go with Nick Fury in place of 13 or Colson. Yeah, I could I could honestly see cutting Colson from the Nick Fury deck. I agree that your hand gets a little clunked sometimes.
I like Angela in the middle typically so we can like fist things through her path. Maybe I start her on the right for that reason. With Good Spider teed up in my hand, I'm just gonna play the Iron Fist on curve here. Top deck vulture like a professional. Rip. That's fine. We get to just uh, use the Spider Ranch 99 next turn now. Getting pigged is perfect. And then I get to go Spider Man 2099 trigger Angela, and then next turn I get to go Spider the 2099 plus Shang Chi somewhere. The fact that we have priority here is super awkward. I'm, I'm losing the right once I pull Spider-Man 2099 out of there. I'm down by one. But I might play right though. It's hard to it's hard to know. And I, I could lose the middle to a lockjaw roll. I think, I think we do this, but this could definitely not end in our favor. Okay, sweet. They bailed. They bailed. They played in the sewer system. It's great for us. So we just have to uh, have plus 15 be enough center. Hulk and it at us here. It does not. Doctor Doom does not. Yeah, I think I think them playing right is most likely. Victory. So that works out pretty cleanly. Four more boosties and we get to split the Iron Fist again. Chance for ink and gold on that split, I believe. Was a doom nerf. Doom bots are only four power now. spread out like this. Real people play a Koye. I think so. Uh, bots don't usually pass for collapsed mine.
That one. Close at the end, but we we squeaked it out. Victory. Yes, there is a good chance that this is just a lower lower pool player. Guys, we got Infinite Conquest. Today, we are going to be playing 2099 Brews on the ladder all day. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'll be taking viewer submissions from my Twitch subscribers to play Infinite Gauntlets with viewer submitted deck lists. So if you want to see us work through the struggle with whatever chat has to provide, be here. Be here the rest of the week. Today, today I want to try and brew with the new card. Put Craven here, we'll put Iron Fist here, then we'll kick uh, 2099 into the Sunspot Path next turn. Rescue. The Angela Craven engine is is still really solid. That's one of my one of my favorite low ends in the game for sure. do this, right? Spread out and play for all three again. Yeah, they're just bouncing. Victory. I think with a lot of the cards that have been added to Marvel Snap in recent memory, Craven has become a premium two drop. Very, very strong. Infinity. All right, chat. Send me, send me your energy. We need a, we need an iron fist split. Which split number is this? The split number five. So no Kirby crackle, but we can get inked and we can get gold. All right, hit me, Brood. Nailed it. And you know what? Honestly, the green border don't even look too bad with the green, the green and yellow text. Another ink for the pile. Another ink for the pile. Slip it. Slip it right on in there.
Solid bit of ink. Drop Zabu here. Play Rescue. And then next turn we get to go Iron Fist into Vulture. Trigger the Rescue, add stats middle. Colossus Patriot. We're cooking, cooking a little bit for the opponent here. We're playing Rescue in this deck because I wanted a card that could just add a big stat number to the board. And this deck has a lot of ways to like trigger Rescue's requirement while also like not committing additional power to her path, which is nice. Yeah, they go weird spectrum deck. They could also they could be Ultron too. Yeah, I don't know. We'll let it we'll let it finish. Let's see what we got. All right, we're gonna snipe the Patriot here and win the game. Oh, do we lose to the Kazar anyways? We do. We got our animation at least. Can 2099 attempt to destroy indestructible cards like Gambit? He can. Yeah. It's not great. It's not great. Lucas! Speaking of things that are great, thank you for the brand new Prime. Appreciate the support. Get us closer to our sub goal for the month. To set an incredibly low bar, this has been the best, the best build that we've played so far. Zabu, so I have the flexibility to Fist plus Spider-Man 2099 on on the turn. We'll play we'll play Vulture into Ant Maze here, which is great. Casual 11 power three drop. two Zabus. That's kind of scary. Thankfully, my mama didn't raise no coward, so we could just play into the danger room here and have everything be okay. Yeah, 
Oh, they're, um, they're Mr. Negative. Is what? Is what they are? That makes sense. With Kitty? Yeah, I think so. I think they're Mr. Negative. Yeah, I'm gonna commit into Ant Maze here, because if, if they're Mr. Negative, ILS Island should be pretty solid for us. That's a good take. Oh, Yes, Tank Magic. There's a good chance we lose this, but... Oh, we're losing the left to Invisible Man. We are. Yeah. Bounce. Escaped. The decent sub for Stegron. Uh, typically, um... Typically Juggernaut. Yeah, Strawberry 29 is probably fine. I posted a video last night highlighting the first six decks we're going to try today, and one of them was a Storm deck list. If you don't want to wait for me to get around to that, you can check it out over there. Just stomped an infinite match with Stock Destroy against High Evolutionary Lockjaw feels good. Yeah, I think the, the Stock Destroy deck is, is reasonable into the, the High Evolutionary deck. It's part of the reason why it's good right now. to Jeff Angela next turn. Could be okay, just like... You know, the problem with Stegrod is if we hit Nova, I'm kind of sad. If we hit that one, it's great, though. Stegron out of the center is an interesting thought. That could have been good. Yeah, probably Surfer Destroy. We just like play here, right? This is plus 11.
Yep, got us. I can't play high card putting us in the ground for plus eight. Is Silver Surfer viable again? Yeah, Silver Surfer's been great for a little bit. There's a few different iterations of it that are going around that are good. I, I like the move variation the best, I think. There's a number that you can play that are reasonable. Is the move variation of Silver Surfer? If you check out my YouTube channel, Hoglandia Stat, we highlighted that on Saturday. I also called it out as one of the best decks for the weekend missions on Friday night. And if you're looking for a source of consistently sweet deck lists, my channel gets a new one basically seven days a week posted. What do you think about Miles Morales instead of Craven? I've seen these matches with the power rarely overcomes for. I'd encourage you to watch more games. It is consistently larger than four. Card is very, very good. Rescue path is here. Iron Fist. Actually, well, yeah, because I need to trigger rescue. And then we do this here. So it goes this way and then it ends up back at Asteroid M. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And then we pull Vulture into here and we Stegron them out of Asteroid M. Destroyer chat. He's so little. Victory. We're close to having a highlight with this one. We're going to play a few more games with this, then we're going to move along to our next 2099 idea. We've got four or five more things I want to try and then we'll also take a peekaboo at some untapped stats and see what other people have been playing and having success with to try that out. Planning to try different 2099 decks all afternoon here on stream. We'll be diving out into the infinite conquest stuff tomorrow is my plan. You have a 2099 deck highlight on YouTube with a verdict about the card? No, no. Anybody giving you a verdict about 2099 deterministically, you know, 12 hours after it released? And I gotta wait and see a little bit. Initial impression is it's maybe a little on the weak side, but it's very much an initial impression. Just like take a take a beat and calm down.
How many infinite tries do you have so far? Thanks to the power of the most powerful card in mobile gaming, my credit card, I have exactly as many infinite tries as I will need. Or what? I want to get rescue going here. Stegron like locks up the Asgard, right? And continues to make their destroy stuff super awkward. What do we think of this? And then next turn I could 2099 and Shang-Chi. I, I, I think I like this. I don't need to move Jeff to mid just yet. I can wait a second on that. Oh, they played around Shang Chi here. Art. What if I do this and spread out and play for all three? Spider Man twenty ninety nine kicks middle. We destroy Deathlock. We give this plus two. It gets plus five from the Jeff. You think they're Zola-ing? This beats Zola because the Venom will eat the middle. If they if they Zola here, we'll win center and right. I think I, I, think I like this. Yeah, we're good, right? Yeah, yeah, the 2099 takes a pit stop in the middle and destroys Deathlock, and then Ghost Spider yanks him into the left. So we end up at 13 over here. And we lose the right by a small margin, but we won the left because Spider-Man 2099 ended there. Yeah, Iron Iron Fist was was Pendag from the previous turn. On turn five, we played Craven Zombie Iron Fist. That's kind of sweet. Kill every move be busted. I don't know. We're definitely just vibe on Iron Fist for now. We've got Zabu for turn two.
this domain definitely favors our opponent a little bit because they're able to reality stone it. Vulture would be a nice draw, put a little pressure on them to do it sooner. As someone who is not series three complete, does it make sense for me to hold caches for the use of so let me read the hold command really quick. All math currently shows holding your reserves is ideal regardless of what your collection looks like if your goal is to maximize the number of series four and five cards you get for free. Take it, take it as you will. this out. Well, I guess depending on what they move, I can shake cheat them down. I need to play this here so they can't Professor X me. Reserves do not have their contents determined until you open them, and any reserves you are holding will be converted to the new reserves and spotlight caches at the appropriate rate under the new system. Uh, I have not seen any air quality alerts for my area. Is the Chicago air quality another feedback from the wildfires? They just like play this for tiebreakers. I'm trying to think like, what do they do that beats me here and also beats me here? I can't think of anything. Close. They just didn't, they didn't think we could. I didn't think we could beat them in, uh, in Duster, man. Bold. Bold. I think they messed up by playing here on turn five. I think they should have waited to play here to turn six to just play one card to grab the Titania. And they could have played to, like, win here and win here. I think they felt too safe inside of Duster, man. All of Michigan's currently in a haze. Gross. This is your, your general reminder as we experience extreme weather events over much of the United States and in many parts of the world that one of the many things you should be doing when you head to the ballot box in wherever country or residence you vote in is vote out all of the people that are fighting against uh, climate action. It would be nice if my children and my grandchildren could have a, a, a habitable world.
What's the best counter to the Lockjaw Evo deck? And there isn't really a hard counter to the Lockjaw Evo deck. Part of the reason why the Lockjaw Evo deck is super popular is it doesn't have any matchups where, like, you start playing the matchup and, like, suddenly you can't win. It's a very consistent deck that has played to it in, uh, in every single matchup. I think things with Shang-Chi are pretty good, and I think, uh, the Destroy deck has an okay matchup into it, but nothing just, like, totally slam dunks it. Raven, and then we're like Vulture on three, Ghost Spider Jeff on four. Zakar is a pretty medium location for us. We have uh, a lot of cards that we want to play in very specific spots. I mean, that worked out okay for us. Um, locations continue to be kind of awkward here. I guess, I guess we'll do this. I think I just chill. draw 2099 so we can coin flip killing the loot cage. Rip. Should we just do this? I guess I could chill and take another draw at it, but then I then I can't make the rescue big. Mmm, Cerebro 3 is a good call out on what they're playing. I think I just chill. Down. You mentioned you're still playing Star Rail. What are your current teams for MOC? I am not an end game Star Rail player. I've been playing it super casually. I do my dailies. I do the time limited events. I'm slowly progressing the main storyline, but I'm only on the on the second planet. So I'm very much not far into it yet. Diablo Diablo 4 has consumed the bulk of my off stream gaming time. The first spotlight cache is guaranteed to have null and tribunal, or was that, for example, for Brazil? We have no idea, Wes. Twenty ninety nine does not destroy face down cards. Why am I holding boosters on Spider Gwen? Because I don't really like my variant. I get a piece of artwork I enjoy. We'll put some boosters into it. We won the coin flip here, which means I get to go ahead and pull their Polaris into Clintar, which is pretty solid. I would snap at this point if we were playing Conquest. We're just playing on the ladder, so I'm vibing. Well, Zabu into Fist, and then 2099 is potential to kill Bishop next turn. Oh, 
Okay, so the Enchantress tells me that they are likely a Sarah deck. As far as like which Hitmonkey Kitty deck they are. Bonk, bonk the bishop here. Just do this and avoid playing for the left. There's variations of this game that we lose, but honestly, it could also be right to like Stegra on the right and then like go spider him into the left. Just like get his effect and dope out. Sick card. He's a sweet card. It, def it definitely. We tried a couple of more traditional move lists to start with him, and he definitely feels like more of a tech utility card in a deck like this than he does as like a dedicated move card. He just doesn't fit into the curve of more dedicated move decks eloquently. They just shadow buff Conquest Sword Bells. I have no idea I'm not currently playing Conquest. No, the Dark the Darkhawk uh 2099 deck's the next one I want to play. So we'll do that uh in a second. Almost almost have enough footage with this one. Classic Gambit Green Goblin deck. He tried, tried and true uh, combo of combos. Lizard was gonna be gonna be a little boy. Little itty bitty baby lizard. To my fellow Diablo DGens, I see there's patch notes on my Twitter timeline. Is there anything juicy in there? Anything relevant to a casual gamer? 
Total nonsense. Thank you for the brand new Prime. Appreciate the support. Push us up towards our sub goal for the month. Does this work? I think this works. They added teleporting straight to Nightmare Dungeons. Yes! That's great. Yeah, I, 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 my understanding here is Jeff dies and I get plus two on Angela. My favorite card back? Uh, I don't know. What type of music do I like? I listen to a lot of uh, early to mid 2000s punk pop. Uh, one of my good friends once described my playlist as the I didn't get asked to prom playlist. And I'm not saying that he's wrong, but I'm also saying he was a dick for pointing it out. Skiorio, thank you for the seven months. Got infinite with the Orca list. Nice. Expletive Gadget, thank you for the brand new Prime. Appreciate it. Good done. Thank you for the half a year. Bowling for Soup, yeah. Bowling for Soup, uh, Fallout Boy, Panic, Simple Plan. All the, all the goodies. Subscribe to my place. Listen, chat, I know my audience has a large chunk of men between the ages of uh, 25 and 34. I play, that, that's, that's many of your playlists as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm supposed to go Spider the Polaris mid. That's probably better. Yes, Conquest Medals reset next week. It is accurate. I think I take this coin flip and we win the game. Oh, we could have shaved the shank for left. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't think about the Angela getting as big as she was getting. My, my plays were sloppy this game. The ghost, the ghost spider should have put the Polaris bit on turn five or whatever. Yes, tickets and medals reset. Oh wait, I actually can't win the coin flip now, right? Because they filled the center. So we have to hit Mysterio or Killmonger here. <laughs> what a what a deeply and incredibly skill-based game we play. Sometimes R and Jesus takes the wheel and he steers you correctly. Hey, Gishin, thank you for the seven months. Welcome back. 
Good on Kevin. All metal music. Uh, I don't know that I'm super into like deep metal, but some stuff, some of it's okay. Phil the janitor. Thank you for the, the quarter of a year. We threw, we threw away the Shang-Chi for the sake of the content. The Twitch FAQ says you still count as a viewer if you mute if you mute the, the video player. Maybe they changed it. For a long time that was not the case. It definitely counts for drops. Wait, does it count for drops? Have you mute the player? Everyone mute and check the stats, yeah. All right, yeah, let's do, let's do this one for a little bit. Now we have not, we're not playing Infinite Conquest today. We'll play Infinite Conquest tomorrow. Chat, I'm gonna give you the best piece of advice you're gonna hear about Infinite Conquest. You need to be okay with not caring about your results, so the game mode is going to be very frustrating for you. You don't get progress on drops if you eat. that. That's what I thought, athlete. Which is what made me. Does does muting the actual player let you get drops though? I I thought I stopped getting drop progress when I muted the player the other day. You do okay. Yeah, I've been, I, I mean, I was getting them muted, but I was tab muted. Minimizing it stops drops. Oh, so if you, if you have it muted and then you tab off the page, do you get drops? Does, is that what it is? If you mute the player and then and then put the tab the tab. Okay. This is a great Elysium. Is it? Our, de our deck's really not a great Elysium deck. If you mute and tab off the page and eventually pause it is. Okay. Oh, well, that's sad, so I'm guaranteed a rock here. We're just chilling for now. There's no urgency to play our cards out faster. bud. Yeah, Miles goes to zero now. I I let a second dinner dev know that and they were uncertain if that was a feature or a bug. They said they, said they were going to look into it, but I didn't follow up with them. Man, not drawing Ghost Spider and not drawing Dark Hawk is, uh, it's a little rough here. I guess I have Shang-Chi. Who am I? What am I? What am I doing, chat? Why are we complaining? I have Shang-Chi. Oh my God, did I just lose? <laughs> I did, I did just lose. It'll be okay.
Can Sarah and Elysia have book cards to zero? I don't know. I think I have any vulture splits. It's gonna, it's gonna change as we keep playing more. Yeah, I only have one vulture split so far. Usually, usually don't start upgrading until we can split to get to Inktergold. Hey, Afro. Thank you for the Afro. Thank you for the five months. I didn't play the free miles. So I didn't know where I wanted to commit it to. Is Doom still good after the nerf? Yes. Like the only place Doom became unplayable was Cerebro 5. this, just letting him get minus one power. this coin flip over here, unfortunately. I just play all these out so I can Shang-Chi plus, uh, plus another card next turn. actually kind of bad, right? I guess if I punt take middle anyways, I can play her there. I think I think they're gonna commit middle. Wow they did. Okay, so uh, Agent 13. Yeah rip that gets us. Spider Man 2099 flip was brutal. If I would have moved Jeff Middle, I could have. I mean, we would have won this, but if I move Jeff Middle and they like split playing for here and here, I lose. Liking this deck list at infinite for the first time using it. Yeah, I mean the the core here is good, right? Like the the Dark Hawk package is very reasonable.
This makes Darkhawk four bigger. They play blue Marvel left. They tie us there. We could just bail out of here. I have one card though. I just gotta make sure I beat Kazar, right? This beats Kazar and Blue Marble. This could lose to. This is this is ideal, right? This beats like. I think this I think this beat, this covers them. Yeah. Victory. And probably just another lower pool player. Collection level based matchmaking falls off instead of infinite, so. Some of the time you'll hit players that have more limited collections, even if you're higher up. Take a Hulk here. That's a bug, right? Is this a bug or is this second dinner taking a strong chance against you fisting yourself? You be the you be the judge. Shoebox, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. J Turbo Banana. Thank you for the 17. And current, thanks for the 20. What the fuck? It tried to move Vulture twice. Weird. That's, is, yeah, so people that weren't looking, we played Iron Fist into Luke's bar, and then I played Iron Fist to get over here, expecting it to end up in Gamma Lab and get a Hulk, but he didn't move himself, and then... My vulture tried to move twice when I played it. Yeah, so it's actually next other card, which is fine, but the text of the card should say that, right? Was that a good draw chat? Oh, we have priority here though. Actually kind of awkward. This is our best chance to win, but you get by Shang Chi though. Why does your stream have subtitles for me? You can't turn them off. If you click on the settings, you can in fact turn them off. It's an accessibility feature on Twitch website that I recently enabled on my stream. Uh, we are supposed to get the 1000 token compensation for the Silk Missions this week, along with the gold and the credits for the other ones.
Exactly, we lose the breaker, GG. It's double experience for Nightmare Dungeons. That's great, because I wanted to farm. How does that make them compare to, uh, compare to Hell Tides? Are Hell Tides still better? Just less better? Well, I want to farm experience for my runes in that game. Helltide's also got experience buffs. They just like made it, they made the end game slightly less grindy. Okay, sweet. That's great. I'm sure someone will complain about that, but it sounds like it's nothing to complain about. Is 2099 worth buying? I think if you're only interested in power level, my initial impression is probably not. It's a very sweet card. I've been having fun with different things. He never really seems like he's at most at home inside of these Zabu shells. But definitely not uh, putting off super powerful energy. He about, he about to murder this, this land shark though, that's for sure. They increase the odds of ink splits or you just get lucky. I'm lucky professionally, chat. You ever punch a baby land shark in the face? Spider Man 2099 is about to. Yes, I my initial read on 2099 is that he's not good inside of dedicated movement decks because the place the way he fits it on your curve is just not very good. It's hard to fit a four energy play into that deck. He's felt pretty good in these zombie decks so far though. That's pretty good. Go spiders my best draw this turn, so I can go vulture into Shuri's lab and then pull it into Stark Tower. With that, we'll just do this, right? Uh, 2099 cannot kill face down cards, that is correct. Uh, Jeff can move a single time. All systems go. Spread out here, play for all three, huh? stone on the right or the left it's a pretty good stone we get it by a little bit though close
Token Tuesdays, good value. Token Tuesdays are still one of the best value bundles you can get in Marvel Snap. If you want a full breakdown on how Token Tuesdays compares to other bundles that are going to be coming up and their costs, you can click on this YouTube video here. You can always come into my chat and type exclamation point bundle to get my latest bundle breakdown. I think for the sake of playing on curve, I'm just like ghost spidering middle here so we can play Miles next turn. Now the Conquest is about a week or so. What do you think of the format? Overall, I am a pretty big fan of Conquest as a format. I do think it still has some problems. I think I talked, I talked about this yesterday on stream. But just to re rearticulate myself a little bit, um, I I think ten is probably the wrong number of cubes for conquest. Um, I think coming back from a ten two loss is too difficult. I think, I think ideally the cube should either be only eight. So if you eat an eight cube loss, the match is just done. Or they should consider increasing it to 12 to make real comebacks realistic after people push mostly all in. I also think if you're worried about how much time a 12 cube format would be, they should make it so the high stakes round starts sooner. I think, I think this is what I would like to see tried. 12, 12 cube life totals, but uh, have the high stakes round start in round three. I think this is probably a comparable amount of time to the current system with 10, but it, uh, it allows for more comeback potential when you hit a bad beat. Yeah, I, I agree, Pluto. I think, I think regardless of if they add two more cubes or take two cubes away, 10's a bad number and they should consider changing it. I personally would prefer 12, but I also think eight would be an improvement. Jeff into here, put Korg in the middle. We're hoping the Diablo's base flips left, obviously. Wind my hand. Still hoping it flips left. Yep. Let's do this. Because if we, uh,. We draw Iron Fist, we can send 2099 to there. A little Cerebro 2 action here from the opponent. I believe we have died. We have died. Hey, speaking of infinity, infinity and conquest, if you're a sub who's in the Discord server and you'd like to claim one of the infinity run submissions in advance, feel free to drop me a DM on there. We get that set up. Otherwise, we'll be taking up day of Wednesday through Friday. 
I imagine. There's going to be a little bit variable depending on how long the runs are, but I imagine we'll probably get through four or five each day at least. Uh, I will pick which avatars get done on the runs that we play. You get, to, you get to pick which deck makes my life difficult. I get to pick my reward if I succeed. Woohoo! We'd snap here on this one. If, uh... It is an excellent hand variant, yes. Well, just 2099. You said before the ship is mostly sailed on beginner content, but I like that your long form conquest videos are excellent windows on how to staff your retreat. Yes, no joke. Um, I have priority. I always do that shit. I always mess up me having priority with saying shit. I'm not thinking about it. Um, we win the breaker because we're both lucky and stupid. Um, the, uh, the Conquest videos might, even if you are not interested in playing Conquest and you're interested in simply climbing the ladder better, I think the Conquest videos I post on YouTube are some of the best educational staff content you're going to find on the internet right now. They're very, very, very good at helping teach you how to staff and retreat. Yikes! Speaking of conquest content, if you if you enjoy my conquest content, this morning's video is taking a complete and total bath via the YouTube algorithm. Please give it a click and a like and some watch time. Just I've had a video perform in the last month and a half to two months. Let's see if we can salvage it. Spot out of the vaults. Well, shoot. look like in terms of the info that YouTube tells you and a video isn't performing well uh, to give you exact specifics when I click into my analytics uh, my like that gold conquest video says it has uh, 1500 views currently which is about 938 views less than usual for the time frame after a video on my channel is typically posted Yeah, this and to uh, shoot the sunspot, right? Sounds great. Oh my gosh, and I got to Shang-Chi the dino in the middle. This is like cheating. Uh, 
Oh. Mm. Okay, so we're 50% to win the right. We hit the dino, we win. Uh, no, wait, are we good? No, we, no, because there's a ghost spider's dying. Big grip. That much activity is expected with the first hour of video going live. That's just comparing it to all of my other videos for the last, the last little bit. So like compared compared to like any other video I post, this is the average amount of views of the next hour. Yeah, I waited a little bit later to post one this morning. It's possible that that video is going to perform poorly because I posted a, a 2099 video last night. It's very, very possible. Videos that don't feature a new card on the day the card is released suffer. No. My, I posted, I usually don't post videos with the card on the day it releases just because I'm not staying up till midnight to record with it. And the last time I declined to do that, it had an exactly average amount of views for my channel. So, while it may sound reasonable to you, that is not what the actual data shows happens. My first infinite with the leader bounce deck. Yeah. That's a fun piece of technology. The person that submitted that was onto something, I think. Sometimes lucky rubber ducky. All systems go. So we just do this, right? And play for total power. And this hawk is uh, sixteen. Thanks to Onslaught Citadel. Yeah, yeah, we locked them out of being able to Kazar Blue Marvel on the right.
All of your medals and tickets reset in conquest. Use them or lose them. What's going on, late night? Thanks for the 11 months. Welcome back. I'd love to kick some rocks into their deck. Up, Angela? Pretty good. Pretty good. This is not a matchup for Spider Man 2099. Is very good, huh? A Fusion Storm, thanks for the seven months. Poo Poo Kitty, coming in hot for the half a year. Good to have you back. All right, step back to reality. She ate, you dropping Bezos money here, Poo Poo. certainly be an ideal draw. Switch stream, pre-recorded, etc, etc. Bluff snap, chat. Don't don't bluff snap. Step out, step out there. Rank 93, and you have one day to push to infinite, what deck would you use? If you know how to play the bounce deck, the bounce deck is the best deck in Marvel Snap. If you do not know how to play the bounce deck, you probably don't have time to learn it. You should play High Evolutionary Lockjaw because the deck is super straightforward and very powerful. I would snap when the raft flipped up if we were playing conquest because we're in a favorable position here. Says local man about to be Galactus. Bounce deck with with or without spider pig. Spider pig is very good, Chet. Play spider pig. It's kind of extra sad that this morning's video is not performing well because it's actually some of the best Marvel Snap content I've ever produced in terms of how fun and sweet and exciting the games are. Escaped. I wanted to thank you for the insight that when you are in a bad matchup in Conquest, you should go all in in any game you have a decent shot. Just beat Sandman Wave Bounce using that wisdom. Yep.
Lapis Tower. They are, they are also a move deck, which is good for us, yeah. This is uh, pretty solid for us here. and Miles Morales are bugged, by the way. This should not cost one right now. It's, bug it's bugged in a beneficial manner. It used to be bugged in a negative manner. I'm not gonna abuse the bug. This should not cost one right now. Cavalier guest, thank you for the two-thirds of a year. Yeah, it's bugged the other way. We, over we overcorrected. Harsh, but fair. Is Token Tuesday still worth buying for a small spender? Depends on how much gold you currently have. There's a couple other gold bundles that are better than Token Tuesdays, but Token Tuesdays is still one of the better ones you can find. Full breakdown and comparison of all upcoming bundles in this video here. Does the ratio value of credits versus token change the economy? Yeah, so that column is gonna have to change, but the TLDR steric is that um, tokens are still the most premium resource. So credits and gold into credits are technically less bad than they were before, but they're still not as good as just getting a bunch of collector's tokens, if that makes sense. What if I put miles here? So then 2099 is guaranteed to hit here next turn when I play him to Ant Maze. Ugh. 
Oh, do they have a Scarlet Witch or some way to interact with the Nexus? Probably dead though. That's probably the real Mysterio. This is enough. Guys, gals, and non binary pals, we got him. Ha! <laughs> got him! Nice deck card. Say hello to my ongoing friend. Nolan 2099 might have some synergy. Yeah, potentially. I've got uh three more 2099 decks I want to try today. We're going to be streaming for two to three more hours yet. And uh, two of them are, are null variations. So we're, def we're definitely going to get to some null Zabu variations of 2099 have definitely felt like the best 2099 decks I've played so far. I would snap here if I was playing Conquest. We want uh, usually Invisible Men's an important card in decks that are playing it, so being able to uh, kill that's a big swing. Get him! A lot of the takes I've seen compare 2099 to Shang-Chi, and I really think that that's a strange comparison. Because, like, obviously Shang-Chi is better at killing big things, and if that's your goal and what you're looking for in a card, you shouldn't play 2099. However, he's kind of unique, right? Like, he blows up things like Invisible Woman, Dracula, excuse me, Cosmo, Lockjaw. There's all, all sorts of cards that you don't mind getting rid of that he can take care of. I'm gonna play Vulture out here to the right. So that way if I draw Ghost Spider, I could go Shang, Darkhawk, Ghost Spider next turn. It's like an expensive Gambit, kinda. It's more controlled than Gambit, right? Like you're dictating your random output range because you know which path you're playing into. And he leaves a bigger body behind. So it provides more stats to the board. dead. Oh my god, they killed us because of all the rocks. Wait, did we get him? Did we get him? Oh, chat! Polaris with the juke! 
Sometimes lucky, rubber ducky. Thought they had us. Victory. I thought they had us. All right, chat, we are by no means anywhere close to done, but I am human and I need to run to the restroom really quick because I'm stepping away. I'm gonna hit a quick ad roll anyways. You're not gonna miss any gameplay. Don't go anywhere. We've got a bunch of uh, 2099 decks I'm interested in trying out before we're done today. Beer me. Appreciate everybody that stuck around through the brief break. We don't run regular mid-roll ads on the channel if I'm sipping away anyways. I tap one so we can disable pre-rolls for a little bit. That's such a good collection of inked and gold cards now. I'd, wa I'd wager I probably have one of the best uh, collections of inks and golds in the in the creator community. My collection level be large. I just noticed some of your screens have your camera flipped compared to others. Yeah, I like to make it so uh, it looks like I'm looking at the game screen in this one. I like, like a two power thing here, but that's fine.
Sorry, I bricked their draw next turn. I want to. I want to end on. Want to end on Vulture though, so that way if I draw Ghost Spider, we can move him. Oh, I guess I can't move him though because of Dark Dimension, right? Hey, Eric! Thanks for jumping for the second month. Welcome back. Appreciate the support. Well? Oh, we could even just take the run in. And they know they gave this to us, right? So they know that's coming. Like, I assume they're leaving here. Or not. Okay. It's infinite. Who cares? The, the Black Widow even makes the run in bigger here at the end. As a general piece of advice, um, Black Widow is not a card you should really be playing with Ronin. While Black Widow on the very last turn makes Ronin too bigger, um, if you play her earlier, she effectively makes it too smaller. And even if she's making him too bigger on the last turn, she was just a 2-3 that didn't do anything else, which still isn't a very good card. Any advice for pushing the last three levels on 95 to infinite? Something I always say is that if you're capable of getting to 95, getting to infinite is just about volume of games. In my, in my experience, everything north of 80 on the ladder is a similar feel in terms of player caliber and how people are snapping and retreating. So getting, getting through that last little hump is just a, a measure of grit and determination. All right, I don't have quite of a full highlight with that one, but I kind of want to try some of these other builds. They're a little bit more different. Am I supposed to feel less inclined to spend gold on variants now that spotlight caches can make it more likely for you to get one for a given card? Yeah, definitely. So something they did was that they changed how much gold you're getting from things, but they're also giving you more of the stuff that you were previously spending gold on. You get you get more of the additional stuff than you got, than they took away, essentially. That's sad. I guess we just vibe now, right? Because the next turn I could go Iron Fist and like Medusa into the more I could kick her over. I I think Medusa is a very reasonable Marvel step card. God, more egg really just sucks for us. I want to store bright, but if I store bright, I can't use 2099. And I kind of want to use 2099 to kill Angela or Collector here. It's probably right to just storm.
You could pay $500 to have a chat pin for five hours. Oh, really? The amount you pay scales how long it pins for? I'm going to have to go in and, t and, and look at those settings and see if I can control any of that. I have all of all of that on the defaults. Rescue. So Yeah, I, I would you usually I the streamer has control over stuff like that. I just have it all at the defaults. Add to my to-do list. Like hype, hype trains, for example, I have turned off. Usually, usually when Twitch adds a feature like that, the content creator has full control over it. Yeah, we get to kill Angela but the should rescue here, so we're good to go. to drop doing some work there and 2099 not getting to blow anything up but just offering six stats still an okay rate for a four energy play I gotta say the the hype and all the questions about the infinity ticket makes me think that second dinner seems like they nailed it with uh adding that system to the game because people are super super hype on finding out if that's a thing that's happening Moving Jeff to force this into here. It's probably unnecessary. It's unnecessary. That's real good. get to play any cards you don't get to play any cards either out out they're dead right Right? <laughs> Victory. Why did Doc Ock not take anything? Oh. Oh, that's a good question. I just assumed their hand was empty. What? What happened with that?
Yeah, they, they had three cards in their hand still last turn. No, flooding doesn't stop it. That's just a bug, right? Yeah, Doc's on reveal. Where I played him doesn't matter. Yeah, Doc's always triggered twice off of London. Weird. Yeah, there's a report bug that we can, we can do. That's weird. It just like didn't go. Ha! I'm gonna Iron Fist Medusa into the Eternity Rage. some flexibility. All right, I choose chaos. Well, I guess we didn't choose chaos. Chaos chose us, but here we go. so good shit oh why is he so good he's such a good little pig I think we've lost mid strong possibility Chat. See, you need Spider Man 2099 for when they pick your Shang-Chi so you can have a backup way to blow their stuff up. YouTube, YouTube will get to see that one. Hey, what's going on, Corlin? Thanks for the seven months. Appreciate you helping the sub goal towards where we're heading this month. I think a Silk over Medusa for more Craven value. I don't think my deck fills locations in enough to control Silk. 
I also am unlikely to be playing Silk on the final turn of the game, so I think I'd prefer not to have her overall. I assume there's a Miles Morales coming down with this uh, this move from last turn. Could be Agatha too, yeah. Could also just be Miles though. Oh, it is Agatha. They have one, they have one less card in deck than we do. They're Agatha. Uh, Agatha and Thanos should really have animations at the start of the game to let you know that your opponent is playing them because of the ability to check it like this. Oh, Korg hit me. You're right, I'm dumb. Weird that they moved into my Craven Path then. Uh, I'm gonna storm the cloning beds. Oh, you know, maybe I should play a rock into Titan this turn. So that way, if I Heimdall at the end, it slides it um, with the rest of the friends here. Could be, could be the line. Make Scraven a little bigger. Yes, the point about showing you Agatha or Thanos at the start is still correct. Because it's, it's derived information, you can click on their thing to find out. They should just visually show it to you up front. It's very, very much the case. This is 16, 21 here in the middle, which is enough to win. They already moved the Nightcrawler. It's supposed to be 12, 12 on the left. I could also like Ghost Spider, Doc Ock into here, but I, th I think this is just better, right? They're, they're more likely to beat points on the left than they are to uh, add points to the middle. Victory. It's, like, it's just kind of a sneaky Heimdall deck, right? Cause like we've got some boost stuff going on, but not a ton of it. What's the next charity stream? I need more Jeff costumes in my life. Usually I like to do some kind of charity thing annually. You can't you can't do them too often or otherwise people just don't have money to give. Uh, space about enough that they can have an impact and be successful. I think in general, Jeff tends to be the generically better card than uh, Silk is. Just gives you more control over what's going on. That utility is valuable. 
I don't have any way to move my stuff, which is pretty unfortunate. So, we good chance we win the Craven Path. The question is going to be, can we put together a win with the rest of this? Maybe I should have... Actually, this was wrong. I should have stormed into 2099 in Asgard, I think. Is what I should have done here. As my like I'm I'm walking through like okay what's my path to winning a second lane like I'm winning I'm winning the Craven path most likely and then how do I win another storm into 2099 would be the answer to how I win another potentially Elditch, thank you for the brand new Prime. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, I, I deserve this, L. Runs on me. Uh, we've not gone to untap Jeff because I still have two more deck lists after this one that I've got put together that I would like to try out. So we may or, may or may not get to untap 2099 stuff today. That's already it's already two o'clock. So usually I spend about an hour or so per deck unless something really really bombs out. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do the the Thanos build next. Is my plan? Yeah, 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 it's infinite. All the cubes are free, bud. Good and stinky. Thanks for the brand new Prime. Appreciate the support. Thank you. I'll play 2099 on the right over here, I think. Ambivalent introverter. We had Shang Chi. I think we were still dead, right? Oh, Jeff plus Shang one. Yeah, totally dead. Good shout. Clock everything in the middle. It's 
always at the bottom. Ever lucky rubber ducky. Mbop doom bot, still very, very strong. I would snap here if we were playing Conquest because I have Vulture 2099 into the Bifrost. That's also great for us with the Dr. Octopus draw. Here is sick. It's two, three, four, five, six, right on up. Oh, I get I guess kitty kitty's pretty good for them, huh? But it's also fine, so we'll get to bail out of Shuri's lab once we fill it. We play spider mid, we could kill Kitty. Yeah, I guess that's true. They might also play into Asgard though. Or they might they might play left. Yeah, yeah, I think we're I think this is They want they want Asgard yet. Oh yeah. That was a glorious smackdown. Winning the coin flips today. Okay, opponent's sleeping. I was like, we're obviously Heimdelling. The question is, am I Heimdelling mid or am I Heimdelling left? We're gonna go up to 19 here. People asking, yeah, you know what? The air quality thing? Uh, it is. We are a 190 AQI here, which is rated unhealthy. Or it's not quite red, but it ain't it ain't great. Yeah, I noticed I, I didn't even think about it. I noticed a burning, a burning smell. I didn't I didn't notice visually anything when I went outside this morning to take the toddler to daycare, but there was definitely a burning smell in the air. There is definitely a, a bit of a, I assume there's construction going on behind my house. So I assumed it was something related to the construction. Well, I didn't, I didn't visually see anything, but yeah, that, that must be what it was. I've said this a couple of times this stream. 
But this is just a good general reminder that when you're looking up politicians in your elections, local and national, make sure to uh, check the no box next to all of the climate action deniers. Some of you, some of you are probably thinking this is the worst air quality of your life. And I would like to remind you that this is the worst air quality of your life so far. This is uh, Iron Fist right into Vulture here. Locations don't really matter to us. I'm obviously pulling Vulture with that top deck. The question is, am I pulling him right or am I pulling him left? If I pull him right, Heimdall could be a decent top deck. plans to take fun, interesting decks into Infinite Conquest. I plan to do all viewer-submitted Conquest runs Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday if we have viewer submissions for it. This is my, is my plan. Uh, doc ocking them sounds lovely, right? So now we Shing and we Craven and we hope we don't get nulled on the right. Yeah, Destroyer and Null are both bad news bears for us. I don't know that I can beat either of those cards, all right? How am, I, how am I winning without Chang, champ? Can someone please explain to me how I'm winning the game without Chang? Without playing Chang? Heim left. Heim left is the worst possible play I can make. It puts 20 points into the left. All right, chat wants to hide left. Worst possible play. Go. I'm sorry. What? Did we just win a breaker? <laughs> All right, those two. Those two cubes are dedicated to you, Twitch chat. As you. As you will. As you will, Twitch chat. Those ones are... I would like the record to reflect that Shang-Chi Zabu also beat this line. Just so we're, just so we're clear. Do well, I have 350 Doc Ock boosters? How many splits do I have?
I have two splits, chat. I could, I could go for the fourth split ink. I think I like the superior dock to the nor dock, if I'm being honest. I like this piece of artwork a lot. Alright, All right, chat, this is uh this is a one in ten. This is uh this is a risky biscuit uh split attempt here. This one cannot be inked. This is guaranteed to be rainbow. And now when we split this bad mama jamma, he has a 10% chance to be inked. 0% at gold, 0% at uh at Kirby Crackle. Your first chance at gold is five, your first chance at Kirby is six. How many caches am I sitting on? About a hundred. People being irrationally angry and having strong opinions while not understanding math is not something that's limited to Marvel Snap Systems. Yes, it is worthwhile. Everyone should be holding reserves. If your goal is to get the most series four and five cards, you should hold your reserves. The only reason to open your reserves is if you want cards that are currently releasing that you don't have tokens for yet. There's a new economic system coming to Marvel Snap. Spotlight caches. If you haven't been following, check out the econ breakdown here. We don't have enough boosters to split this Dorco again. We, are, we already hit one ink today, though, so we're running hot. All right, chat, I need you to believe. I need you to believe, chat. I need you to believe. Hit me, bro. Never lucky rubber ducky. We have 115 boosters. All right, I guess we'll I guess we'll buy some some credits to upgrade him here. And I gotta start saving up to go again. Probably be 300 tokens this weekend, right? They said upcoming weekend tokens for the new cards will be between 100 and 500. They said they're going to try a bunch of different amounts and see if different amounts incentivize different behavior. I'm going to put this one up to red border while we're playing with it here because I would like to have another split attempt so we can go for a gold or inked on it. Is there a way to target what boosters you get for a card in your deck? Kind of. So you see how this card now has 10 boosters, but I need 50 for the next upgrade. As long as this card, any cards in your deck that are missing boosters, um, that are missing boosters from their next upgrade are twice as likely to get boosters at the end of a game. So it's still far from a guarantee, but it's a small push towards the cards that need them. Hey, Parak, thanks for the brand new Prime. Appreciate the support. Yes, the Silk giving a thousand was was an outlier. Is 
The Nick Fury deck got me an Infinity Conquest win on my first ticket. Congrats, Slug. That deck's really great. It literally just exploded. Well, thanks for taking Tree Fitty from Jeff Bezos before you blew up and giving him to me. Appreciate it. IDWE, thank you for the seven months. Welcome back. Got the better end of that deal. Medusa fills the curve nicely here. Uh, they said we're supposed to get the thousand silk credits this week, but they didn't say when exactly. Soon, TM. Cade, thanks for the third of a year. What's going on, Metal Joe? Thanks for the 10 months. They're gonna dock Ock the middle. I'm gonna do this so that way. Wait, they have Doc Ock in their Mr. Negative deck? That's so fucking weird. I'm just gonna do this so that everything comes into play at all. It all does stuff. Yeah, maybe there's some kind of weird Galactus deck. That's a good read. If they're a weird Galactus deck, do I do this so I have the most utility to play for the right, potentially? I think so. Oh yeah, negative Galactus doesn't work anymore. That's a good, that's a good shout. Maybe they just like loaded up their deck list and they haven't played it a little bit. And they didn't, they didn't realize that it doesn't work anymore. That's probably it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're just cooking. Maybe they're so baked and we maybe they're super baked and we just don't get it. Quent refugee, rip Quent shit. Oh no! You gave me a five ten. That that's actually low key kind of great about playing Doctor Octopus right now, huh? Let's just be like, reasonable into the pig. Hey, cover, thanks for the brand new prime. There's a lot of great people who can sell this every month on Twitch. Thanks for sending it this way and supporting my content with it. Yeah, I've been playing some Century. Century's one of my favorite things. Is it smart to use tokens to complete series three or to save for a big bad? Well, in terms of what's strictly optimal, 
Saving, saving your tokens is strictly optimal. Or using your tokens on permanent series five cards is strictly optimal. As for what's ideal for you, do what sparks joy. How do I plan to open my caches after the patch? Well, I'll, I will say one thing I'm super looking forward to is that there's no reason left to hoard regular caches after the patch goes. So once, once, and that's actually the big change. Like people are talking about how this is going to incentivize you to hoard spotlight caches. And while it's true, you'll want to hold on to spotlights for weeks for those cards that you want. All of the regular caches will just be open on site moving forward, which is a great quality of life upgrade for me personally. Do not, I do not like having to wait to open things that I enjoy. Oh my God. I forgot that iron fist was going to happen. We won by accident. LOL. L O L. We would have been good regardless. Weird deck. Calculated. Victory. Our brain siege. Okay. We do this. And then they'll play for the Avengers compound and will play for the Avengers compound as well. And then Spider-Man 2099 will like bonk whatever they played out because of the Bifrost. I mean, it's the ladder. It's just like press the button, feel good. Gotta win our, gotta win our coin flip here. Rip, rip. I guess Jeff gets us into the middle here, technically, huh? So we'll go Dr. Octopus on the left, empty their hand out practically, and then on the last turn, we go Spider Doc Ock over to here and we Jeff the middle. trip around the world and unfortunately we have died who's the move deck now yep kicking kicking vulture mid doesn't accomplish anything chat
We could go spider and then kick this mid, but then we're only tied mid, right? Oh, I also just don't have enough space, yeah. What does moving Medusa left do? Uh, how am I getting more than eight here? We still, we still only tie. Yeah, that gives me a space for over here, but the space doesn't matter, Chad. I can't win either of these locations. We're timing out. It doesn't matter. We've lost We've lost the game. I can sit here and stop wasting their time. Escaped. So, yeah. So, like, we could pull Doc Ock here, and we could move Medusa if we wanted, and we could kick a Vulture mid. But, like, they're at 27 here, right? We're only tying here, and there's no way we're winning a tiebreaker. So, like, I, under I understand the line people are pointing out, but, like... There's no, there's no, there's no path to victory here. We, we needed, uh, would Shang-Chi have done it? Shang-Chi on the left would have let us pull this here to be 18, and then Shang-Chi would have put them to 15. Uh, we still would have been short, right? Yeah. Just how it be sometimes. It's so weird that it puts the life totals up when it hangs on the ladder. What sort a of function does Doc Ock fill on this deck? It's a disruptive tool. Hey, what's going on, Wilker Wilker? are engaging on the YouTube side. Today's YouTube video is taking a bath. I think I probably, probably should have waited till later this afternoon to publish it with the 2099 video going up last night. It's a shame too, because the conquest set for today's video is really, really good. It's not a bad location for us. Storm is not a terrible one to eat some pork here. Yeah, the, the base idea behind Doc Ock is you can pull all of the relevant stuff into one lane, and then you could either Shang-Chi that lane, or you can bounce out of that lane um, with Ghost Spider pulling Doc Ock into somewhere else after the fact. You can also hide all the Doc Ock over to the left. Or both, yeah. Yeah, sometimes sometimes both is good. What 
do I want to do here? Do I want to play for Mojo World or do I want to play for Kunlun and Nowhere? I think I kind of want to play for Kunlun and Nowhere. So I think I'm going to Spider Man here. And then honestly, probably Doc Ock here too. Okay. I could Doc Ock nowhere. So the problem with Doc Ocking nowhere is that I can't, um, if I Doc Ock nowhere and then I Heimdall, I, um, this is a little risky into the Nick Fury. If I Doc Ock nowhere and then I Heimdall, I, uh, I have to Heimdall here because this is nowhere. Is there a Thanos deck? No, they generated Thanos. Okay. I need. I. I think I. I can't have just Spider Man twenty ninety nine center. Is what I'm fumbling out to say here. There's some question of if this is enough stats to win the left though. Might not be. Yeah. No, we're good. We're good by a little bit. Okay. We could have set it up to have Jeff plus Spider-Man center. Yeah, that's fair. I could have I could have slid Jeff to the right and then put Doc Ock into Cudlon. Yeah, maybe you're right that that's better. I wasn't thinking about putting Jeff right to then slide him middle. A good, a good catch. We ended up winning this, but I think you're right that your line is is better. For people that are new here, I don't usually play Weird World games or District X games inside of the Infinite Ladder. I'm just like looking to try and play games with my my deck that we're playing. I'm not interested in uh playing with half my deck and half theirs. Is Shadow King more tangible with Bots? I think Shadow King's a very playable Marvel step card. We've had first baby land sharks, yes, but what about fourth baby land sharks? Dagger is very good. I'm not interested in playing her in this deck. Yeah, if, if Bar Sinister had been center or right, I would have considered playing this on it just for the sake of the LOLs. I think I'm playing Ghost Spider out. We just pass. Wind aid my hand.
Oh, because I put the Jeff in the middle, I might not get um, Spider-Man 2099 to the right. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to leave one Jeff on the left. <laughs> now that's funny. Nailed it. Easy game. Hit the Nebula. Do bot. Sure, good enough. Okay. Yep. Yep. Huzzah. Victory. Funny slash slick game. Small mistake with the Jeff on my part, but we were good even through it. Doc, Doc Ock is a very fun Marvel snap card. Does Strange Academy move the cards in the order of the position of the Academy? I don't think so, but I don't know for sure. I wanted for Christmas. They Galactus? Oh God, are we going to get Galactus in the center? Come and get it, I guess. We have priority here, so the Doc Ock pulls their stuff in before... The Doc Ock pulls their stuff in before the Galactus flips up, because we won the coin flip. We're def definitely getting sniped. Uh, they desperately need to make it consistent which cards interact with face down cards and which cards do not. S Stegron and Kingpin and other and Hala destroying face down cards and interacting with face down cards, but like destroy or not and uh, 2099 not arrow grabbing face down cards. And so. It's so incredibly inconsistent across their systems. Escaped. I mean, I am confident that they are explicitly choosing which cards do that which cards don't i just think they really shouldn't be do making a case-by-case -case basis they should probably have it just be consistent Wakanda 
That uh, messes up an Ardem Zola nicely. Spy bin here. That's a fun one into both Jotunheim and the bar. Probably into Jotunheim though. I don't, because in order in order to uh, dock Ock the bar and get enough copies, I have to move Jeff into Jotunheim, and Jeff Jeff's a little baby shark. He doesn't want to be in Jotunheim. Twenty ninety nine does not hit unrevealed cards, though. It's part of that inconsistency we're talking about. Actually great for us, right? Yeah. This puts them to fifteen. Ooh, can we win? Does the scorpion get us? Puts them down to 11. Got a bet on 2099. That is, that is an out. Moving a Jeff bit only ties. This also only ties, and then we lose the breaker. Ah, we lost our twenty five percent. Our rip. It is too strong. Remember when people wanted that card nerfed? Ah, Scorpion, such a simpler time. With the Ghost Spider in hand as another enabler teed up, I'm just going to go ahead and Iron Fist into Medusa here to put... Uh, put power into the eternity range. Is this Iron Fist split goes hard. He's a good lad. Quite the gambit our opponent has played here.
Kinda wish we had Doc Ock to empty their hand for Dracula, because we had the Shang-Chi to cheat up after, along with the Ghost Spider. But no Doc Ock, no Spider-Man 2099 in sight. Kinda unfortunate. Discard a bad card here. We win the center. Opponent snapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're infinite. Let's see. Uh, let's see a game finish, huh? Scrabbin. Six for the brand new prime. Appreciate the support. It shows closer to our sub goal. I did see there was a Diablo patch up. Looking forward to playing that tonight. Did they, uh, did the Diablo patch adjust any of the classes? I saw that they buffed, uh, like, experience and Nightmare Dungeons and loot and stuff to make the end game less grindy. 2099 cannot blow up another thing if you bounce it. It only ever kills one thing per game. They buffed a lot of things. Okay, cool. I'll have to, I'll have to look. Did they touch anything on my, on my Pulverized Druid? I was gonna make a joke about uh, storming DC and something to do with an insurrection, but I wasn't wasn't quite sure how I wanted to stick the landing on that one, so we're gonna let it go for now. Oh my gosh, chat! Oh my gosh! It's another card that murders Wong. Which is good, right? We definitely had a stark lack of things that murder Wong. Don't tell, don't tell Scotty shit. Scotty is currently unaware. Come here, bud. Whoop. The web sling into web sling KO is so satisfying. No target! No target! <laughs> Bye, Wong! Hey, Eric! Thank you for the third of a year. Welcome back. My air quality index is up to 207 from 190. Does anybody know any sites that track predictions for this stuff? For different areas or regions so I can see if they estimate if it's going to get worse before it gets better? Airnow.gov, got it.
mean, we're gonna storm the left anyways, right? So that's fine. Reason why it's high in my area. Yeah, the smoke from the wildfires in Canada is make it, making it its way downtown. Double-edged sword, right? They might be playing into the left this turn, but they're also like they're playing kitty in the middle. So we're gonna we're gonna pull this out. This is one of those spots where again, if we were playing conquest, I'd snap at this point. Because we're we're favored, I think. I think they could be vipering left. Yeah, they could be. I don't know. I think they're they, they look like the bounce deck, right? So I think viper's unlikely. Do we dock Ock Luke Spar? Uh, no, I think we dock Ock the center, right? Because the center is the only location they can play to currently. Just want to lock them out of the only spot they can play. And they'll, they'll obviously, well, I was just say they'll obviously have Kitty there, but they actually might not because they could Kitty into Luke Spar. This is, this is definitely what I'm interested in doing. Just like take their options away. Yes, you're held. Hold the reason to hold your caches is because they're going to turn into spotlight caches. Some out of them. That is that is confirmed. They haven't told us the exact process or what that's going to look like. But one one per ten you're holding are going to convert. We don't know which one among the ten though. Opponent. Build anyways. Yeah, they must have been playing around wave. It's probably a fair subset of our deck. So they're at 16 here. I'm at 15. I'm adding nine. Their kitty is eight. So if they Chavez, we win the breaker by one. Because we'll go to 24, they'll go to 25, and we're up two. If you play Jeff into Luke's bar, he gets kicked back to your hand. He can slip in the side door, but you can't play him there outright. Yes, when Spotlight Cash System gets implemented, they're going to very clearly be labeled as Spotlight Caches along the track for you. Been a long last couple of turns from the opponent. Victory. All right, this one. I think this might be my favorite of the the decks I've tried so far. It's either it's either this one or this one. Are the two they, they and to be fair they have a lot of overlap in their bottom it's kind of just like the the top end that's super different let's try let's try the the thanos build here huh 
Doc Ock. Doc Ock is a very fun Marvel Snap card when it's not paired with Galactus. Big agree. Big agree. Uh, we played the Darkhawk build a little bit. It felt okay. I won't say that it's bad just because the Darkhawk core is good, but I liked it less than the other two builds that we played. I don't I don't know that the Darkhawk build is better than just playing Stature Hawk, if that makes sense. In, in general, especially when while we while we'll, well, why, while we will try things like that on the on the Twitch side, I I really don't like highlighting things on my YouTube channel that are just like a worse version of an existing deck. Like a lot a lot there's a lot of content that gets created around new card releases where someone just like takes the new card, shoves it into an existing established archetype with maybe one other card to enable it. And they're like, hey, the new card's good. And it's like, well, you took a stock good deck and you messed it up by two cards. So yeah, the deck you're playing is still good, but it's not really like a highlight of the new card being good a lot of the time. It's like, obviously, obviously the thing that was good before is still good if 10 cards are the same. Which, to be fair, talking about that, this is an example of doing that, right? Like, this this deck has been around the fringes of... Has been around the fringes of the format. And we have simply added Spider-Man 2099 and Ghost Spider into it. So one of, my, one of my goals while playing this is not just to get a feel for the deck as a whole, but to get a feel for, hey, is Spider-Man 2099 adding value to this deck and doing something meaningful that's worth having? Oh, our 2099 is a sniper chat. Look at him go. Look at him go. Last turn, cards can be played at center, eh? I think I just Killmonger to clear the Nebula, and then I'm gonna Thanos left for a total of 13. Just let him have the middle. Yeah, the person saying they were getting some stream lag. I have not had any drop frames on my end. So definitely uh, refresh on yours if you're having issues. He's not even trained yet. Yep. There's so many good variants for this card, too. Be fun, to, fun to get one in, dress him up. You've said it a few different ways, but the best argument for 2099 is against things like Lockjaw, Invisible Woman, Wong. Yeah, things like things like that that like Shang-Chi can't kill. Daredevil, stuff like that. Destiny. Uh, this location's good for us, right? So I'm just gonna, like, reality stone something else. Inked Death Wed. I quite literally have zero credits at the moment. I had to, I had to buy credits to miss splitting on my Dr. Octopus, so... At some point, I will need to spend all of my Death Boosters, but... Not, not that time yet. I made a meme deck of all the spider people and it's been confusing opponents. That's great, Duff. I'll do that at some point too. Appreciate the, the second month re-up. Moving us up towards our sub goal. 
All I'm saying, chat, is if you're the next sub on the channel, you could be sub point number 2,369. I know how desirable that is for many. A gig, thanks for the renewal. Appreciate the five months. Hey, thanks for the sub gift for us, team. Nailed it. I think I want to just pull this into here, and then we plan on Shang-Chi winning the middle. Get on, Rand. Appreciate it. They could have like a Cosmo or whatnot here. Is they technically have to 50 50 where it goes though? power uh four drop doom could get us yeah that's true doom's i think unlikely in a in a collector deck like theirs though Victory. I do think this kind of generic destroy core is very reasonable though. With with and without Thanos has both been putting up results. Let's do this. And then we'll get to Carnage and our next turn, pulling the Reality Stone over. You see them running out of cards to make any type suit, or are they going at a good pace? There are uh, dozens, if not a hundred plus, data mined unreleased cards. They've got a great design team. They're not gonna run out of ideas or concepts anytime soon. Part of, part of the idea of this deck is we slotted in 2099 with Ghost Spider, but Space Stone is also a 2099 enabler. Which is, uh, kind of nice. We just murder the Quinjet here before they start making things. This cuts, this cuts them off of Nick's Fury, uh, Nick Fury six drop this turn. We shang the left, and then we can null into Dark Dimension next turn, potentially. It is worth noting we haven't triggered Angela yet. Or sorry, we haven't triggered Aunt Maze yet, I mean. So can't really play for there.
I think we just hope that 17 holds left. That they play for the Dark Dimension. They don't know what cost card I put into theirs. So they might be afraid to play for it and play for Xandar instead. Yeah, rip. <laughs> Fair. Fair. The fact, the fact that I hadn't played into Ant Maze yet let, let them feel safe about play, not playing anymore there. So they figured I just couldn't contest it and they had it for free and they were correct. It's a good read. GG Grizzle Fluff. One thing into Gamma Lab. We're a Shang-Chi deck, so you never you never really want to commit more than one card to Gamma Lab when you're a Shang-Chi deck. One, you don't want to get blown out by their Shang-Chi, but two, um, one's enough to get you across the finish line. Well, like I guess the Snow Guard's not doing a lot. Ah, I could die. I could die to a Carnage or a Killmonger to make Death and Null bigger. This card has such beautiful artwork for such an unplayable Marvel staff card. I, re I really hope they redesign her at some point. I, really, I would really love for this artwork to be attached to a playable card. say Silk is used as a build your own six drop. I think it depends on the deck. So using her as a build your own six drop is definitely something you could do. But I don't think she's limited to just that, that usage. If you're if you're playing a deck that likes to enable cards moving around like Miles Morales or Craven, she's good. And if you're playing a deck that can like fill the board to kind of control where she can bounce to, she's good. Let's do this and play for all three, right? Says local man about to lose to Doctor Doom. No, 2099 cannot deal with face down cards. Stegron. Uh, Stegron does, though. Let's play one big one. Victory. So, so far, my initial read of, is this going to be just like a destroy deck with this thrown in? So far, it's kind of feeling like that. Our deck itself is feeling quite reasonable slash fine, so I think the destroy archetype is solid. But I, don't, I don't know that 29 dead is necessarily adding value here. Play for a little bit more to get a feel for it, and then I've got one more, one more deck list. I might, may or may not try, depending on how long we go and what the viewer counts like. This whole season has been underwhelming with its guards. I mean, Spider Pig is literally a new format staple. And Silk is a very playable two drop. So I guess I guess I'm confused of what you want from like not every card can be Galactus, right? I don't know. I feel I feel like people are trained from other card games to be like if a card doesn't like 
delete every archetype out of the game, you should be upset with it or not call it reasonable. Like, I actually think Spider Pig and uh, Silk are kind of like A+, plus. this is a good power level and where cards should be. Yeah, if you ask me, Jeff, are you happy with the... Yeah, I think, I think Ghost Spider is a good power level too. Talking about season pass cards, complete, completely agree. Yeah, they're just they're not they're not busted, right? They're just like balanced new cards that are playable. Imagine, imagine game designers having the audacity to balance their game. Despite all the cards this season, it still feels like the move archetype is lacking in general. I don't think the move archetype is lacking cards so much as the move archetype just isn't consistent enough. In part due to location variance. I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing the move deck struggles with is location variance. There's just so, so many locations that are so terrible for you. Finally beat Tears of the Kingdom today. I know you're not a fan, but what would you play next, Genshin or Honkai? So Genshin is a real-time uh, RPG fighting game similar to Tears. Honkai is a turn-based game. So if you, if you want something more similar to Genshin, Honkai is definitely the recommendation. Um, This could kind of go a couple different ways here. It's unfortunate they pulled Wolverine into here, so I couldn't play two cards over here. Depending on where Wolverine goes. Fill right to make uh, Wolverine more likely to go left. Yeah, that's a good call. I like that. Make a spider. Uh, Wolverine ending left would be ideal. Got 22. I think we lose regardless, right? Because I have 8, 14. Yeah, I can only get to 20. Oh, yeah, there are 26. Which is so nice. Uh, so far, 2099 has uh, struggled to feel like it's relevant outside of the Zabu decks. Well, I guess I guess the Storm deck. Um, I guess the Storm deck was fine. This one, this one, this one felt okay. This build and this build have been my two favorites that we've played. I think this is probably going to be the highlight tomorrow morning on the YouTube side. My, my one opinion that I have that's early is 2099 does not feel like it is a good card inside of the dedicated movement decks because it feels difficult to be able to fit him in on curve with the other things that that deck is looking to do. I actually didn't play any Tears of the Kingdom. Because after reading reviews, everyone basically said if you didn't like Breath of the Wild, you won't like Tears of the Kingdom. And I wasn't a big fan of Breath of the Wild. Not only was I not a fan of like my weapon breaking every 60 seconds, but I think the actual combat part of Breath of the Wild is a bit worse than a lot of the third person combat in a lot of other modern games. Like, it's fine. It's more... The, the combat in Breath of the Wild felt more like a physics game to me than third-person combat. Which is different and unique. It just wasn't something I enjoyed. Also, I also prefer my RPG games to have more voice acting than the, the Zelda games have. They are very, very skimpy on the amount of voice acting they provide. It's even more physics-based now. Yeah, okay. Well, 
Well, I mean... Yeah, D I, I honestly was shocked that everything in Diablo, even miscellaneous bullshit side quests, was fully voiced. In a, in a very pleasant manner, was I surprised. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 will get added to... My list of video games that I want to play eventually that, let's be honest, I'm probably never going to play. <laughs> Asking Nintendo for voice actors is how you end up with Chris Pratt as Princess Zelda. Oof. Can we do this? Let me like slam a Thanos next turn. Possibly a death. Any cards might blow it up. That's a big enchant, and this this draw is part of the reason why I punted this path. Knowing that uh, we could draw that and then we'd lose it if we played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got Shang-Chi, they got Shang-Chi. Otherwise, let's go. They got a bunch of tech cards. They could have Shang-Chi. Oh, I didn't enter in, thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's not that the click didn't register, it's that they explicitly prevent you from ending the turn for a short amount of time after your opponent steps. What chair do I use? One that I've been sitting in for too long concurrently. Let's stand up. Oh. Destiny will arrive. I tried a standing desk. Standing desks are desks are a great chat if you're an old man like me. Saying Nintendo can't, as someone who's a Genshin Impact enjoyer, and that game is fully voiced in a bunch of different languages, saying Nintendo can't do it and it's too much work is a fucking cop out. The reason why Nintendo doesn't fully voice act their games like, like uh, Breath of the Wild and stuff is the same reason why the Nintendo Switch is a potato piece of hardware that was old the day it was re it released. They know that all of the people that are committed to the Nintendo IPs are gonna continue to buy their shit regardless of if the Switch is a potato and regardless of if it's voice acted. So why on God's green earth would they exert an ounce more effort than they need to if people are gonna eat the shit up anyways? And it's fine if you enjoy it. Like, you, you should like what you like and don't let me disliking things, like, just, like, prevent you from liking them. But that's 100% why they don't put in more effort. Because they don't, they don't have to, and they know they don't have to.
It's like, um, what was I going to say? The Pokemon company hasn't sent me anything for a while at the, ri at the risk of being on their shit list. Um, one of the things I always found funny from a late stage capitalism perspective is, could you imagine if any other modern video game series today released two versions of their game that are basically the same but just have slightly different offerings inside them to encourage people to buy the game fucking twice. Like whoever came up with that three decades ago, I hope, I hope they, I hope they were paid lots of money for that because they, that makes them so much money. Isn't that better than selling you $20 content every single month? It depends on the content. If the content I'm being sold every single month adds new meaningful things to the game, then I'm I'm okay with that. I'm like, obviously your tolerance for whatever is whatever, but also like, even if selling new content for 20 bucks a month is something you find scummy, you pointing out that some places sell content for 20 bucks a month and it's scummy doesn't excuse the fact that this other thing is shitty. That's a classic what we refer to as a whataboutism in a discussion where instead of engaging with the point that I made that's relevant and good, you instead say, hey, what about this other thing that's also bad? It's like, yes, multiple things are allowed to be fucking bad simultaneously and something else being bad doesn't take away from the current discussion about this thing being bad. Pokemon is functionally the same game it was in 1996 minus new mechanics interest. I I actually I disagree with that actually, Mike. As so, as someone who hadn't played a mainline Pokemon game in a really long time and that I played through most of uh, Pokemon Sword. Poke Pokemon Sword is everything I would have wanted a Pokemon game to be when I was growing up as a child. Like as someone who hadn't hadn't played a mainline game since Pokemon like Pokemon Crystal. I played Pokemon Sword and it it had it was very, very different than the games I grew up with in a way that I enjoyed. I think we're dead here. I, I don't have a way to play for both of these paths, so I think they just play for one of them and then we lose it. I guess we're like kind of flipping a coin. They could also be what just win this one here. Yeah, or they could have like Odin's here and crushed us, right? I started playing Snap at the end of last season. I've been using a budget move deck. I hit infinite last week. Is move busted or I just get lucky? So sub infinite matchmaking, you do still need to play well to get to infinite M. But the thing to be aware of is while your collection level is low, sub infinite matchmaking tries to pair you into other people with low collection levels to try and keep the matches kind of balanced with your gameplay. So it's not until your collection level like 600 plus that you kind of like hit the deep end of the pool and are really playing with people that are experienced at the game. So you definitely had to play well to get where you got, but it's a, it's gonna be an entirely different game once you get past collection level 600. Yes. What skills do I play? Do I play on my journey? I assume you mean Diablo? I'm playing a pulverized build. Uh, so uh, the, the Roar, Earthen Bulwark, the pulverized slam and then the the bear rage. Yeah, but here here's the thing, haters. If having random noises instead of voice acting was simply about charm and not about not spending the money to polish it. It takes zero fucking effort for them to put little chirpy noises like that into the game. So they could very easily still have their random chirpy noises in in the game. Um, while also having voice acting for the many people that prefer that. So again, I think it's purely just lazy. Don't want to invest the time and energy into it. Because for people that aren't familiar with the industry, high quality voice acting is really fucking expensive. 
<laughs> like it's it's not cheap to do. It makes makes your video game incredibly more expensive. Uh, I think I'm holding this for after Killmonger. Someone said, is Diablo 4 worth it? I have not really played a Diablo game since Diablo 2. And uh, Diablo 4 is... Uh, I've played a lot of Diablo 4. <laughs> a lot of Diablo 4. I think I'm not killmongering the soul stone with this. So we'll do this this turn. We'll do this. We'll do this. I'm committing this into the middle. I think that's fine. To everyone pointing out that voice actors often aren't paid well for being voice actors when I said doing voice acting properly is expensive. I will just like let you know that the actual voice actors are really far from the only cost in adding voice acting to your game. It's just the thing you should be aware of. I mean, we're definitely saying here our hands absurd. We're gonna get to play all of it. Man, we don't have priority. Invisible but hiding priority for them is great. Yeah, probably some Taskmaster shenanigans here is a good show. I can do this, but I think we probably still just die. Let them play it out. Because again, unfortunately, uh, 299 does not hit face down cards. Enchantress! Rough. Rough. it a little bit and their pile of shuri cards they lost high evolutionary how will they ever survive oh i had an extra one I, they really need to fix the time stone bug where it doesn't visually show you how much energy you have appropriately. I guess we kind of got rewarded here, but still kind of feels bad. Maybe I should put uh, souls, the soul stone in the middle, so that way you can play like null left on the last turn. Yeah, 
don't think I can win all three paths. Even if we could, we might be dead anyways. So for this last deck, what if we just take all of the cards that blow shit up? We like kind of put them, put them in a pile, in a pile together. We did. What if we did something, something along these lines? We have Kingpin, and we probably want Magneto for Kingpin, right? Or do we want Juggernaut for Juggernaut Kingpin on six? We want Wong, maybe? I need some other things that fill the curve at the bottom. We got a couple of fours, maybe Zabu's fine. Is Wong good? Wong works with exactly Gambit. I need a couple of move cards for 20.99. Yeah, I mean, the, the point of voice acting haters and the point is that it is explicitly not for people like you. Like people like you, like I said, are already addicted to their game and are gonna like play it, play and even defend in a random Twitch chat online their decisions to not do voice acting to 2,000 people. Like the pur the purpose of adding something like voice acting in the cost would be to reach new audiences, but they feel they don't need to do that. Yeah, Juggernaut for Kingpin sounds good. Strange moves your trying to die. Yeah. I feel like I probably want at least like one more cheap thing. Yeah, do I want a Magneto to go with Kingpin too? I could see that. Why would I play Nova and Carnage? That doesn't seem very good. This has got to be terrible, right? Does it though? All right, fine. We'll play a couple of games. I think Null will probably never be played. Yeah, it's probably a fair assessment. Do we just like play Killmonger for the sake of clearing out random stuff? We have Shang-Chi. Like we'll win some games because there's a Shang-Chi in our deck, right? Okay. 
they're gonna want to play right to not slide into the space throne so we'll juggernaut right to put them into the space throne i guess if they go center they end up back right rip Now I just do this, right? And murder their Zabu. Because they're Mr. Negative, uh, their Zabu is actually less valuable here. Just because, um, what's the word I'm searching for? They just likely don't have a lot of other fours. Let's play our cards out into Nidvler here. Gambiting them actually um, is bad because it would kill Mr. Negative since we have priority. Dennis Supa, thank you for the seven months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. And Wacko Jacko, thanks for dropping in for a quarter of a year. Doki. They do have they do have three negative cards here, chat. They could they could get us. So Coach Spider cannot pull anything into the middle. It was a, a bold snap into Shang-Chi the format. general reminder that if you come into my chat and you ask a question that likely has been asked a hundred times over the course of my stream nine times out of ten i'm not going to verbally respond to you because i've already verbally responded to it many times and i'm instead going to enter a command in the chat that answers your question so if you're asking a question of me you should be keeping an eye on the chat not just listening for my verbal response It's extra rich when I take the time to type a command into my chat for you then to complain that I wouldn't give you an answer to your question as you complain in the chat where you're not paying attention. Just super fucking entitled. Yeah, I, I wasn't talking to you, Baron. I was talking to the person that said I won't give them an answer to whether or not I'm playing Conquest today. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 100% the right person. All right, so we get to Iron Fist, and then we can knock uh, knock the old, old 2099 into the center path here. Hey, thanks for sticking around, Tekkis. Yeah, 
So yeah, two, two really good targets here in the center. Boop them, boop them on the nose. And they unfortunately don't have priority here, so I can't. I can't killmonger them. Uh, feels bad, man. I don't know that I want to kingpin right this turn and let them know that it's coming. If that if that makes sense. I kind of want it to be a surprise for next turn, but I also... Yeah. I kind of don't have any good plays here. I really hope they consider making Kitty Pride count towards priority. It's so crazy that her stats don't. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll jug left just for the sake of it, but they also, they also changed Angela, so having priority is not even good for Juggernaut here. So, we get to Juggernaut them, and they don't get Cloning Bats copies, but this Angela still gains eight, or gains six or whatever. This is real stupid. I just, I just don't have a, a route to victory here now, right? Even if I'm, even if I'm killmongering or just not keeping up anywhere. Yeah, they, they have priority now, so I can't kick Juggernaut off them anymore. That would be a good nerf. I agree with AMI. It's kind of, it's really, but you can, if you go back and look at different Marvel Snap player takes when they changed Kitty because of the bug, the number of people that were like, she's just worse than she was previously because they didn't understand how her change interacted with priority is really funny. You can, you can separate out the people that like get the game at a fundamental level and people that don't. Jeff roasts his chat more than I've ever seen a streamer do, and I'm all for it. God bless, Skyzors. Good to have you here. Teenage Warhead left, and then we go like Fist 2099 into the kill next turn, potentially win that. Oh, they're just playing for the raft. I guess that makes sense. Oh my gosh, we would have gotten the lockjaw, brutal. Do you think this game needs a card that can counter abilities that are not on reveal or ongoing abilities? Uh, I mean, that's kind of what this card does, right? Yeah, Leech and Spider Pig do something like that to a degree, too. Shadow King takes that off of things. There's a, there's a lot of uh, interactive stuff in this game. Killmonger. All right, they get their free six drop. Could Ghost be somewhat okay to kitty? Yeah, but the problem is then you have Ghost in your deck.
Needed a Shang Chi draw here. We'll get this one a couple more shakes, but un unsurprisingly, putting all the cards that blow stuff up doesn't seem very good. That's a, that's a solid, solid wombo combo. Yeah, yeah, I think Invisible Woman's a better way to interact with Kitty Pride than Ghost is. She has, she has more stats and uh, she has more utility in other spots. We want our coin flip there. It's just up to up to ego if Killmonger is gonna get played out here. All right, does ego play left for Spider-Man 2099 to do something here? Does a second Ghost Spider pull herself with Sinister Linda? And she would, yes. So close. Twenty ninety nine fails to kill something on his first move. Can he kill something on his second move? I actually don't know the answer to that question. Air qualities up to 220 a AQI. Stay safe out there, chat. As the as the world is literally burning around us. What's going on? There are currently wildfires going on in Canada that are seeping down into uh, other parts of the world. This is a yearly occurrence where I'm from. Yikes. 
Yeah, yeah, it's over the entirety of the Midwest right now, it looks like. It's worse up north from where I am. What's Chicago? Chicago, say. Oh, Chicago's actually not that much worse than where I'm at. Chad, I think I'm over this deck. I think, I, I think I'm over this deck. I think it's about 4 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and call it an afternoon. You can see all of the decks that we played today on my untapped page here, as well as with deck techs of them over on the Snap, the Snap YouTube channel, Oglandia Snap. Uh, my quick takeaways are my two favorites on the day were this build here with Dr. Octopus, because Dr. Octopus is a super fun card. I think my highlight tomorrow on the YouTube channel is probably gonna be this one with Stegron and Rescue. Um, Zabu Hawk also felt okay, but I'm not sure if this is actually better than just playing Stature Black Bolt. Probably end up playing some more games with this, but if you like Dark Hawk, I think this particular build is uh, is fine. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already today, we had some awesome Hella Conquest games up on the YouTube channel. If you could check that out, the YouTube algorithm is murdering it in terms of performance so far today. You can give it a click and like and some watch time. I'd appreciate it. I'll post that link in chat here before I sign off. I'll be back. Tomorrow morning, assuming my toddler cooperates in the morning, I'm going to do a little bit of Diablo to start, and then we're going to do viewer-submitted decks for uh, Infinity Conquest runs are open. We didn't do any of those today since we were brewing with 2099 all day, but we're going to see if we can spike some five-win runs with uh, with some viewer-submitted piles of cards. Uh, the soonest the economic changes can come are the patch on July 11th. So barring any issues, I would assume that they're coming there. Appreciate all the su new subs and resubs today. Push us up towards our sub goal for the month. Looks like we might be on track to keep the channel ad free for July, which would be great. I appreciate that support and not needing to do that. I'm going to find someone to raid here on the old twitch.tv and I am heading out.